send it so that if there will be any problem, we can send it from our side also. Yeah, that's it. Okay. 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 Oh, I'm asking him. I have forwarded the uh, PPT to your SMP ID mail. I have sent a mail, Paraji. Yes, sir. To your SMP ID mail. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hope you have received it, okay? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can download the PPT. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine.
गुड मॉर्निंग सर आई एम ऑडियो इफ आई ऑडियो गुड मॉर्निंग सर इज इट ऑडिबल हेलो हाँ गुड मॉर्निंग सर इज इट ऑडिबल हाँ कैन यू सी मी यस 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 सर आर यू एबल टू हियर मी यस सर यस यस या ओके राइट फाइन थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सर ओके आई हैव ऑलरेडी शेयर्ड माय पीपीटी ऑन द स्क्रीन यू कैन सी द पीपीटी आल्सो ऑन द स्क्रीन नो इट इज नॉट देयर What okay. will start? Uh, yeah, if you start, I think you will start. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, sir, uh, can you please share your screen, sir? What? Uh, can you please share your uh, PPT? Yeah, is it okay now? Are you able to see? Uh, uh, share, ah? Huh? Yes, yes. You have to share. You want me to share the PPT? Yes. yes. Okay. Now okay? Yeah, it is fine. Right. Okay. You are able to see the PPT now? Yes, sir. Okay, right. Fine. Thank you. 
वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई रिक्वेस्ट शुभश्री मैडम to give a brief introduction to uh, dr professor cbk rao sir who is also my guy he is a great teacher a great administrator and as in the morning as i have told whatever the changes we are observing in nit warangal he is the uh, man behind it please subhashri madam you can continue thank you sir good morning everyone I am Subhashri Panda, co-convener of this uh, online conference on behalf of Government College of Engineering, Kolhapur. Heartily welcome you all to the third session of SMPIT 2020. It is a great privilege to honor Professor C B K Rao sir as our keynote speaker. So, eminent Indian. Faculty of Civil Engineering Department at NIT Warangal. He has graduated from J N Technological University, Kakinada. He has completed his M Tech and PhD from R E C Warangal. He has guided five PhD Hello. students. Hello. Hello. Sir, am I audible? Yeah. Hello. Okay, sir. Thank you. He has guided. Hello. He has guided five uh, PhD scholars. He has completed two funded research projects, and other four projects are under progress. Sir has published more than one hundred and fifty research papers in international journals, international and national conferences. He has submitted four patents. He has worked at AIT Bangkok for a period of time. He is a member of BIA in CD four. Member of Building Lines and Gypsum Products Sectional Committee. He is a member of Cement and Concrete Sectional Committee. 
His research interests are engineer cement composites, ductility of concrete, and retrofitting. Thank you, sir. Sir, I heartily welcome you to address the gathering and present the to your support. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Subhashree. Thank you, sir. Um, first of all, at the outset, I will I thank the organizers for inviting me to this uh, uh, conference and uh, asking me to give a lecture on uh, a topic. And I choose my topic as a uh, ductile concrete, and this is my. Uh, my favorite subject, in fact, it's a cement composites. Um, now I'll start uh, presenting my slides. Hope everybody is able to hear and I am audible to you. Okay? And I'm, everybody is able to see me. Is it okay now? Can yes. I start? Yes, sir. Anyone? Ms. Bahraji, can I yes, start? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, right. Thank you. Yeah, this presentation uh, consists of mainly a brief introduction and uh, ductility in concrete. Because my focus is about the ductility of concrete, ductility in concrete, ductility with ties, ductility with fibers, and the latest ultra ductile concrete. For me, concrete always uh, gives me a pleasure, and also it uh, for me it is a wonder material. And so I think it is a wonder material for everybody also. Uh, if if uh, everybody recollects. The concrete making has become almost like a child's play for anybody. Everybody must have seen at one time or the other on the street itself. People will mix uh, cement, aggregate and all with a gamela and all they start using it. So concrete making is a, is a simple child's play or is, is it a, is a so simple a thing. But at the same time it is also very very complicated. How it has become so simple? Because at the very beginning, people started thinking that this concrete has a very good qualities. It is very strong and uh, it's very durable and all such things. Now, is it really so? Let us see. There are a lot of developments in the concrete, right? From uh, ordinary concrete to the assistant concrete, self-compacting concrete, and so many other things. Let us go through this journey. And my focus is mainly on the how to improve the ductility of the concrete. That is my focus, right? So with this, let us say, let us look at these myths, strong and durable. It is maintenance free and it is fire resistance. All these myths are shattered. It is not really very strong. It is not really very durable. It is not maintenance free. Yes, it requires uh, some kind of attention every time. And it is not fire resistant. It is fire resistant, not to full extent. And now comes the, the serviceability aspects. Is it really serviceable? Yes, there are, right, they, in the concrete itself, there are inherently that micro cracking, cracking is present. And hence, automatically, that, that itself leads to some kind of a, a difficulty. So it is environmental sensitive, and there are, there are dif difficulties that are present right in the concrete itself. Now you see, you can make the concrete, in order to make the concrete, what we have is cement, aggregate, material, everything is the same. Material is the same, whether it is a low strength concrete or normal strength concrete or high strength concrete or HPC or UHPC. Everything is the same. Everything, you want to make a good concrete, you can make it. If you want to make a bad concrete, you can make it. Material is the same. Now, as per our uh, standards and all, there are the, Bifurcation will be, we will be just making classifications. Ordinary concrete, standard concrete, and high strength concrete. These boundaries are not permanent. Today M50 can become tomorrow M60, like that. At present, we are just thinking that M55 is a standard concrete, 
and from M60 onwards, it is the highest strength car. But normally, the typical classification is normal strength concrete is a 20 to 50, high strength is from 50 to 100 MPa, ultra high strength concrete is taken as 100 to 150 MPa, and special concrete is taken as a greater than 150 MPa. So from this table, what we can see is this M20 is not is a is a lowest grade concrete. That means what is the meaning of it? You take any aggregate, you take any any kind of a cement and you just mix water and make, make a concrete, definitely I am sure you will get M20 grade concrete. That is a, the lowest possible with the present uh, kind of cement available and technologies available. So from there it starts, to what extent you are going? You are going right up to the greater than 150 MPa. Yes, you can target, you can achieve 170 MPa concrete also is possible. Now what is this journey? How is this possible? On what is happening in all these things? Let us just go through this. This is a simple uh, testing of a, as everybody knows, we put the uh, cylinder in the compression testing machine and record the load and deformations. And this is a pattern in which uh, the failure will occur. If you see this here, this is a, a this is a normal uh, longitudinal track and here is the cone formation is there. If there is no friction at the top, automatically the formation of crack will be like this. If there is friction at the top, you will have find the, the cone formation. Similarly here also in the, in the case of a cube. This is a typical failure pattern of a concrete. And if you see here, this is the failure pattern in the case of a high strength concrete. In a normal strength concrete, it is such a sudden failure will not be there. So here you can see a kind of explosive failure. There is a video also available in YouTube. You can see that for high strength concrete, it is just like an explosion. But however, you that is a that is an excellent uh, capture of a particular specimen. But it is not so explosive, but it will be explosive. What is the meaning of this? The meaning is that that the concrete is as as you are increasing the strength the concrete is going to be very very brittle concrete itself is brittle as we all know but concrete becomes still brittle as we as we target for higher strengths so the what is the difficulty down that means the basic difficulty there is that the concrete the inherent duct, inherent ductility whatever is the little ductility that is present within the concrete that will be lost Concrete becomes brittle and brittle and more brittle and this one. So now let us look at the this concept of this. So if you see the uh, stress strain diagram for a normal strength concrete and high strength concrete, you can see here the point not not to strain corresponding to this. Beyond that, there is a flatness. Whereas in the case of a high strength concrete, at point not not to and beyond that, there is an increase in the strength. See, this flatness means what? The flatness means this increase in, in, increase in the strain. Increase in the strain means increase in the deformation. So it is able to deform. The concrete is able to deform under the load. So that exactly is the quality that is required. Otherwise, what happens is just like you have seen earlier, there become, that becomes a, a, very, a very explosive kind of a failure like the earlier one. Right? So now let us see the philosophy further. Now if you see this here, if you model, it's a normal strength concrete and this is a high strength concrete. So if this case, it has to be modeled as a, a triangular one and this will be modeled as a, a parabolic one. So based on this, we can see in our uh, Indian standard code of practice, right? This is a uh, stress strain diagram we have adopted Point not not two that is a strain beyond which uh, up to point not not three five there is an increase in the strain without increase in the stress that is a kind of uh, stress strain diagram we had adopted the very quality of increasing in deformation without increasing in the load that is a that is a kind of uh, a strain hardening that is a kind of uh, ductility so. If you see the ductility part, what is the ductility? Ductility is able, able to, to deform, whether it is a material 
or if you take a section section should be able to deform that means what is the section it can be a, if it is a bending moment under bending moment it is a rotation right if it is a member if it is a deflection if it is a structure overall deflection so there should be the ability to deform is a ductility so material should undergo deformation should be able to undergo deformation section also in the same way able to undergo deformation if you look at the art so material ductility then the section ductility then comes the member ductility then stru structure ductility so this is higher one by one higher so if you have the higher ductility for the material next comes the section ductility this can be explained with the help of a small example if you just take a, a fixed beam of span 8 and uh, span 8 meters and m25 grad concrete and fu 4 and 5 if you make a simple analysis and look at the uh, various uh, deformations if you look at the section that is uh, where the critical section where is the critical section yes. the rotation at ultimate and uh, to the rotation at yielding that is ultimate to the yielding ratio if you take it is 4.2 and if it is for the member ductility if you take the member that means it is a deflection so if you take the maximum deflection at the yielding and at the ultimate this is 2.05 that means your uh, section ductility is more than the member ductility i'll go back to the previous slide again if you see here the section ductility should be more than the member ductility then still if you go further you you see the material ductility that means what is our focus so basically we should focus on the material ductility so we have to make our concrete more ductile that is a, that should be our focus how to make it so what to do so improve material ductility that's the only choice as far as possible let us try to improve the ductility of the the concrete itself now ductility now this here it is not new to us in fact uh, have improving ductility of the concrete this everywhere whether it is a column or a beam we provide ties we provide the stirrups that stirrup or the tie they also uh, improve ductility how it is acting let us see because the property if you see the uh, this is a, a principal axis one direction this is another principal axis right that means if you take a cylinder and if you apply a force from the top then automatically the lateral increase will be there we know that that lateral deformation suppose if i confine the laterally if i put pressure on the lateral side so the pressure that i can apply from the vertical will increase that means i can improve the axial compressive strength as much as i can improve the laterally i can improve the uh, longitudinally also so that means under biaxial compression or triaxial compression the stress increases automatically that means what is that that is there so you have to apply lateral force in order to counter the the longitudinal force that's what exactly is this the stress and uh, this biaxial curve indicates okay this is a simple philosophy of a strength of materials and here these are the experiments if you take a a say unconfined concrete this is a plain concrete if there is a, a confining pressure a lateral pressure you everybody must be must have seen a triaxial test in the case of a soil mechanics laboratory they put pressure on the all round and apply the axial force that all round pressure is not the hydrostatic pressure that's a on all directions you are applying a confining pressure and you are applying the there's a confined see confined compressive strength so here the confined force is applied at 7.52 you can see there's a there is shoot up in the axial compressive strength if there is a 13.9 newton per mm square again there is a shoot up in the axial carrying capacity here there is a uh, another one and apart from that the un another interesting thing is here the strain not only the strength the strain is also shooting up so that means the deformation capacity is also increasing this is the this is the concept this is a click point here now let us see how actually the mechanism is working so if you take the concrete and if you take the specimen what we are doing is we are providing a, a stirrup like this once we provide a stirrup once we apply axial force there is going to be a lateral increase when there is a lateral increase 
these corners, they will actually apply the force here. They will apply the force. So this is unconfined concrete here. This is the this part is not confined. This part is not confined. This part, not. but what is confined is this is a part that is confined. Just because of this confinement, automatically the load carrying capacity will increase. Deformation capacity will also increase. Similarly, if I suppose instead of a rectangular, if I provide a, a circular hoop, then automatically the pressure is on all the sides. So there are nothing like weak points. They, these are the weak points. These are nothing like these are not uncon. These are not confined. But here everything is fully confined. The further increase we can expect. So this is uh, the confinement of a or uh, the stirrup, the tie that we are providing automatically acts as a as a confinement. It provides a confinement. The confinement itself will improve the deformation capacity of the concrete. So that itself is improving the ductility of the concrete. This is the first step. Almost we can say we are doing it and we are reaping the benefit of it also at the same time. Right? Let us look at a few things. So here. The same thing with uh, suppose if I provide different kinds of stirrups, if I provide a stirrup, I am further increasing. If I provide few more stirrups, again there is further increasing. So like this, so confinement is providing a, a strength, strength is increasing at the same time deformation also increasing. Here one point is should be very clear, unless the concrete starts dilation, that means starts flowing from laterally, the stirrup will not come into picture. The stirrup will not start providing the confinement. Till then, it will be sleeping. It will be acting like a for other purposes, like to take care of the shear and all such things. The moment the con concrete starts dilating, the dilating is moving laterally. Then the the stirrup will start providing a, a confinement effect. So that confinement effect will will give us a. a an opportunity or uh, uh, for the concrete to undergo a more deformation. So that is the confinement of a square rectangular section with a different type and arrangements. So this is the basic philosophy with which you are getting the reaping the ductility. So based on this concept, so our Indian standard board has, has compulsorily specified that there should be a ductile detailing such that the structure will have enough warning or it will undergo deformations. So these are the uh, uh, confinements or the, these are the detailing that we are going to provide in our, in all our structures. So this is a, again uh, taken from the code. Now our problem is, is not that. If, if what if concrete can be made ductile? Let us make the concrete itself ductile. ductile. So then that is more beneficial. So the material itself is going to be a ductile material then the benefit is much more higher than the earlier one. Let us see how it can be done. When we are concentrating here, when we are concentrating on the ductility, we are not concentrating on the ductility of an ordinary concrete or an armor strength concrete, M20, M30, M. no, that is not our aim. The, our aim is for the high strength concrete. Because high strength concrete is a more brittle and it requires more attention and it requires more ductility. So I have to improve ductility for the the higher grade concretes and the high strength concretes and which are very brittle in nature. So now let us look at the technology or the philosophy or the mechanism that is involved in it. So what I present is the basic principles and nothing, I am not going into more details of those equations and all such things. Let us see how it happens, the mechanism, basic mechanism. So philosophy of ductile concrete, in the, the here, what we require is, I have to develop, there are two things I have to do. I have to first of all develop the high strength concrete. Then I have to improve the ductility of this. These are the two things. So remember, if you recall, 1940s probably, in 1940s, M40 is the high strength concrete. Why it has become 1940s or 1970s? Because the precious concrete has started that, that time. When the precious concrete has started, then we require high strength concrete for precious concrete. So then, the, then the, this problem has not occurred that the concrete M40 is manageable and only that is required for the strength purposes, not the deformation. Now if you go beyond M50, M60, M70, M90, M100, just imagine how, how brittle it is going to be, how explosive it is going to be. So that means I, I have to target for high strength concrete and I have to target for ductility of the concrete. 
So in this, I'll divide this into two parts. So one is first of all, I'll attack the, I'll see how actually I can make a high strength concrete. That means my target is M90 or M100. I, in my laboratory, I'm able to get easily one M90. So how actually we are able to achieve and what is the mechanism in it? Then I'll go to the ductility part of it. Then I combine both. Now high strength concrete. So what paved the way for high strength concrete? What is the research that is behind that has really made we are able to make a good concrete and high strength concrete? Let us see the basic philosophy behind it. So breakthrough in the research, the chemical admixtures. In fact, it has almost started somewhere around 1940s, 1950s research. The, it has come into use almost in, during 1970s. And I have seen a, a chemical admixture in India in 1980s itself. So research in chemical admixtures, that is, it will improve the workability. It, there are so many other uh, requirements, so air and training, and so many other properties that are required in order to achieve that objective. So research in chemical admixtures, development high strength cement, that is another one. For a very long time, we have only 33 grade cement. After some time, we got 53. We are now seeing 53. Now, 50, if you go to market, you don't get 33 grade cement at all. Right? You get only you have 53 grade cement. That means you have reached a stage, you are able to produce a very good cement itself. That means the basic one. So that is, of course, there's a lot of technology that has gone into it. Killing, killing technology. There's a lot of innovations and uh, breakthroughs and in innovation in uh, cleans and also grinding technology and so many things are there. So that means the higher the higher grinding and uh, micro micro level uh, small particle grinding is there. So that is high strength. That is the basic philosophy is develop the high strength concrete. Chemical admixtures, high strength cement. And then another one, not only cement, we are now using to mineral admixtures like fly ash and so many other things I can, I may, I, I'm able to use it very judiciously and I'm able to get a, 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 a mixed, a graded cements or, or uh, with various fly ash, slag and all things, blended cements we call it, okay. Apart from that, the packing theory, the particle packing and improved understanding of hydration, this is the highest one. Still it is going, still the research is going on understanding the hydration of cement. What we know earlier is only hydration of our cement only. Now there is a hydration of cement plus fly ash, cement plus a silica fume. What happens, how the hydration is taking place, what is the rate of reaction and so many other things. So these breakthroughs in chemical admixtures, high strength cement, mineral admixtures, packing theory, understanding of hydration, all these have compute, com have contributed in order to achieve the high strength concrete of even grade of M, M50R, M70R, M170R, M150R, something like that. Let us uh, let us look into the few, uh, for a few other aspects. So these are the, the microstructure analysis. Unless we make a microstructure analysis, you will not understand how actually hydration is taking place and all. So this is the improvements that are taking place. So the other one is the, the filler effect. Here, the filler effect means the, if if you use very large size, if I use M40 grade, 40 mm metal, I don't think I can get a, a, even a 40 Newton per M, M40 grade concrete. Difficult. So you have to use the smaller size and you have to pack it properly. The, here this packing is done, first of all, in the cement itself. The fine things, cement pack itself. How it is possible? That means, Finer than cement, I will put into the cement. That means cement is mixed with finer than cement particles. So thereby, there is a good packing right within cement. Just forget about the aggregate. It is a fine packing in the cement itself. So here, while mixing, just not mixing the filling the voids, I am getting the benefit of hydration also. So that is a polylonic effect. So here, silicious particles react with lime, released by cement, in the presence of water to generate product of hydration. Here, this is the hydration that is going to take place, that we call it as a secondary hydration. So, that is a filler effect, is one, that is within the cement. And also, the packing of the aggregates. Now, if you see here, the polyline effect, when the mineral admixtures such as fly ash, 
which are aluminum silicates added to cement these react with calcium hydroxide to form additional calcium silicate hydrates in the hydrated cement matrix these additional hydrates increase the density of the matrix this is important density of the matrix refine the pore structure here what happens is the internal pore structure that means if you add more and more water it becomes porous so that means porous means it becomes some uh, voids that are present in it so that is to be avoided it should be as minimum as possible pore structure should be so the refinement is there will be the, there is a pore structure again hydration will play, take place some pores will be closed off again so thereby there is an improvement in the the pore structure that is going to take place so this is called the poislanic effect this is caoh will be will be reacting with the silicon silicon oxide that is present in either flash and it forms into the secondary hydration formation that is ca sio to 3a hto here right similarly suppose if you use a, a slag or something like that right you can have a, again there is a again secondary reaction will take place that means the mixing of either fly ash or a slag or in or silica fume or any other cementitious material that is the mineral admixtures will actually activating into the the secondary hydration what is the primary hydration primary hydration with the cement itself that is straight away and the secondary hydration will be triggered the secondary hydration will be triggered and the secondary hydration will start taking place and that will actually improve the the pore structure reformation and improve the the strength of it so this is the basic philosophy on which it is working and of course here the blending this is a big art again again there is a big science that is involved in it so how much is to be involved how much is to be mixed up this is a this is a lot of research and it is still the research is going on on the blended cement so this is a, a simple uh, um, explanation if i suppose if i take big balls there is a gap and i small with a small pores again i small with a, with still smaller particles so this is how they actually the the density we can we can arrive at the maximum density can be arrived at by properly mixing remember this density mixing this obtaining the maximum density not only in cement it also happens with the aggregate also at the same time that means you have to play you have to somehow manage this packing of the aggregates and the packing of the, the cement also the packing is a physical one and internally that is going to take place the, the chemical one so that is the hydration so thereby the once the, the hydration take place automatically the, the binding capacity will increase so this is the, this is all the theory in order to do all how we have to play with the cement and aggregates in order to get the high strength right so in fact if you look at the water cement ratio requirement we go to 0.6 0.7 it's not at all required so what is the minimum water cement ratio that is required the optimum minimum water cement ratio is just in order to hydration to take place 0.22 is just sufficient enough that means what happens if you are putting more than 0.22 that means that is excess water you are putting more than what is required so whatever is more than what you are putting what happens it will not stay inside it will get evaporated it will go out so that part will become automatically a void inside it forms into the capillary reactions so that will of course automatically reduce the the strength of the concrete so that means i must be able to manage my concrete to the minimum of the minimum possible water how much it is equal to it is 0.22 so i have to use a minimum water cement ratio i have to make my concrete cement very packed i have to pack my cement or to pack my aggregates and use minimum cement then how it is possible how it is possible to uh, work with my concrete with 0.22 that there comes our the super plasticizer and chemical admixtures so 0.22 is sufficient you will see later how much they are using so hence the research is there on the reduction in water so drastic reduction in mixing water so results in a reduced distance between the cement particles result in denser mix for which we require high range water reducing admixtures chemical admixtures that is we call it as super plasticizers so here the super plasticizer what are the uh, the research that is going that has gone inside is it is possible with uh, some lignol sulfate based are there and uh, naphthalene based are there so this is a, a research 
that has taken place. And in cementitious materials, we have fly ash, blast furnace slag, silica fume, beta coilin, rice ash cash, like that. So many other uh, cementitious materials. If you see here, you can see from here cementation materials from left to right, various uh, things are there. So here is a slag and calcinated shale and fly ash and silica fume. These are the different kinds of uh, uh, so cementitious materials or mineral admixtures that are available. Right here, the mixing and proportioning is very important. Here you can see, let us look at the, uh, the stable and same. What we have seen earlier is that the secondary reaction will take place. The secondary reaction is the calcium hydroxide will react with the silicon dioxide, say SiO2. That means silicon dioxide that should be present. If you see SiO2 here, if you see the silica, it's 90%. If it is some uh, fly ash, somewhere around 50% that is present. In other cases, you can see some 50%. Apart from that, there is a calcium oxide also. And here the calcium is present. In the case of the silica is very less. In some cases, there is a, some, some case of CaO is also there. In, uh, in, uh, in slag or other kinds of things, like you, you can find 40% here. That means, we have the secondary materials, that is the cementitious materials, which contains silica and which contains calcium oxide also. So, if there is calcium oxide also, the calcium oxide also will, will act like, on its own it cannot do anything. Again, it, that is to be triggered, that reaction has to be triggered. That means the GGPS, the ground granulated slag, right, this 40% of CaO, and this 35 percent of this silicon dioxide will activate with the main primary cement and act into the form of the again secondary hydration take place suppose if i use only silica yes it is very fine material excellent fine material there's 90 percent of silica fume is there but in order to in order to act 90 percent fully activated i must there must be available cao stress also so there can be there or there it may not be there if it is available, it will react. The remaining becomes only a filler material. So if I want to reap the best benefit, that means I must be I must be able to exploit every particle, right? Both the cement and also particles of the cementitious materials. I must be able to exploit both. So for that, maybe right, this ground granulated slag. This is a this is the one that is being used. And a lot of experiments are going on and a lot of research is there. So by using all these kinds, I can achieve my high strength concrete. I can improve my the strength of the concrete. So these are the chemical properties and so on. Now you can see, let us see how actually these, uh, uh, these things are uh, there, right? Now uh, some, co some collection of some data here. There are some uh, 10 places where they have used the high strength concrete. And you can see the high strength concrete, that's the M28 grade concrete. The, at 28 days, this is 59 Newton per ohm square. Here it is 119 or 120 Newton per ohm square. So if you see the, the cement content, here it is 425, here it is 5, 564, 513. There's not much difference. If you see here 564 and here it is 564. Whereas if you see the, the corresponding strength, it is 780.6. And here, if you see the corresponding one, you are getting on it. That means the, the amount of cement that you have used here and there are one and the same. Here you have managed it. Here that means the coarse aggregate, somehow you have managed it. The fine aggregate, you have managed it. And here, what is used here is the, in this case, there is no fly ash, there is no slag, there is no silica. But whereas here, if you see, there is 104 kg per cubic meter of the one and here it is a, the silica use used. That means it is a proper blending. That means what is the secret? The secret is that it is a proper blending of cement and the the secondary cementitious materials. That is a is a proper blending and you have to see the chemistry of it. There is a lot of uh, hydration that will take place. That is to be very carefully you have to manage this. And also the aggregates also. The aggregate packing is very very essential. What the size of the aggregate you are taking is very, very essential. It should be highly densely packed. So, based on this, now with this knowledge, maybe I think we can produce the high strength concrete. How we can produce the high strength concrete? Yes, we can make it 
by using mineral admixtures very judiciously, by using chemical admixtures that is also very judiciously, aggregates also and also providing as low as very low strength, uh, low water cement ratio. If you see the previous one, the water cement ratio here is 0.4, here it is 0.22 is the water cement ratio. So you can see the low water cement ratio you can provide and curing is also another important aspect in all these things. In uh, ordinary curing, sometimes it does not work. We have to go for a, a steam curing or a, some kind of a special curing technique uh, without which it is not possible. Curing is also very important in this. So, so due to low permeability of high strength concrete, it takes considerable time for water to penetrate to concrete and contribute to hydration process. So this is another problem. So curing also is important. So that is the, now you are able to produce a high strength concrete. Once you produce high strength concrete, it has become brittle. Now what is that I have to improve? I have to improve the ductility. I have to improve the deformation capacity of the, the concrete. So for which, now we will look at the, the what is what has developed, what, is, what has happened, what is the research in the fiber reinforced concrete. That means we introduce fibers right into the, the concrete itself. So fiber reinforced concrete is made of concrete or mortar. It can be mortar also as matrix. The discrete fibers as reinforcement. It is discrete, it can be discrete or it can be continuous fibers also. A mesh can also be used, something like a ferro cement. Both are possible. Mostly it is the discrete fibers here. Okay. So fibers can be steel, glass, organic polymers, naturally occurring uh, asbestos fibers or anything of the sort. Normally, the uh, if this uh, length of the fibers is around 75 mm diameter is around 1, 1 mm like that. Now let us look at the, the philosophy and the mechanism how actually the, the whole thing is occurring. What is it, where, 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 how we are able to achieve that, the deformation capacity of concrete by introducing, by simply putting fibers, will it increase? No, there's a lot of technology again, the science and mechanics are involved into it. Let us look into the, the mechanics of it. So here, of course, there are the different kinds of uh, uh, fibers that can be used. So again, steel, polypropylene, carbon, air, glass fibers and all such things. And here is the, the properties, right? Here you can see the, the properties. Particularly, I focus my attention on the, the modulus of elastic. Because this is one property which really plays in, uh, in judiciously selecting the one. So there are, there are uh, fibers which have high modulus of elastic. There are uh, fibers which are having low modulus of elastic. Let us look at this as steel. It is around 200, 160. Let us look at the, the carbon. It is 228. Let us look at the glass fibers, right? Somewhere glass. It is 72. And we have the, these are the modulus of low, low modulus of elastic. You can see the polyesters and polypropylene. So these are the low modulus and the high modulus. So that means fibers of modulus of elastic, you feel a lot of influence of the modulus of elastic on the deformation capacity of the cement. So some contribute to the strength, some contribute to the, the deformations. Here we have to play again, how to play it, right? So if you see the, look at the mechanics of it, here this is a plain concrete and here is a fiber reinforced concrete. In the plain concrete you will have a, a curve like this, whereas in fiber reinforced concrete there will be a drop and a step and there will be a drop. That means it is not suddenly, the crack will not open so suddenly, it will open again, there is a gap and again it will open, again a gap. There. That means the crack opening will be delayed because there is an action of the fiber is here involved and it will act like a bridge. One by one, one by one, they will start as it propagates, the fibers will come into picture, come into play, come into action. So they will not come into action so suddenly. All the may, may not come into action suddenly. One by one, it may come into action. And so, by, so thereby, it will provide some kind of a deformation capacity. So let us look into the uh, a few more mechanism and a few more insight into it. So if you see here, this is a plain concrete, and here it is a fiber reinforced concrete, and here it is a high performance fiber reinforced concrete. So if you see, there is a shoot up, that means here, from here, there is a slight increase, of course, it is, it is falling very suddenly, but just by adding fibers, 
what has happening is there is a, a sudden failure is restricted and thereby and here if you judiciously manage you are actually restricting even from the this strength you are improving the strength and also you are improving the the deformation capacity also that means we can manage both strength and deformation can be both be managed so it is possible how by judiciously providing reinforcement within it so let us see let us see the mechanism of it how it is happening so here i'll take a short length fibers if i use a short length and long length i'll call it a short length say around 5 mm or 6 mm long length say for example 20 mm length of only one grade let us take mono grade mono grade means either i use only steel either i use only glass fiber or polypropylene or something of that sort okay right mono grade i'll i'll use a only one kind of a uh, fibers and what i am now doing is i am looking at what happens if i use only small small fibers if i use small fibers what happens is here it is only giving the the strength aspect now i'll put long fibers so what happens if i use the long fibers the long fibers bridge the gap and thereby the deformation is increasing here now i use what i do is i'll mix up because i want to get the strength and i want to get the deformation so now what i do is i mix up the long length and short length fibers and thereby i'll, I'll prepare a graded fiber i'll prepare a, a graded fiber and i i'll see what happens here so here by mixing the short length fibers here are the short length fibers here are the long length fibers if i mix up judiciously this long and short fibers i am getting the strength and also i am getting the the deformation also that means here is the magic that means by the proportioning is a is a technique that is involved in it let us look at a, a few more things of it so here if i see these are mono fibers only uh, this is the polystyrene very low cap low you have seen there the modulus of velocity is very low there okay and here it's a carbon high carbon high strength is there and high modulus of velocity and here you can see this is a steel and this is a glass so glass is having around 70 and whereas the steel is having around 190 these are the modulus of velocity so as this modulus of velocity that is stiffness is as as it is stiff so that means the stiffness is playing a role here so if you see these two glass this is a steel this is a glass whereas glass it is falling whereas the steel is improving so that means you can play with modulus of velocity also that means it is not only the length it is not only the length you can also play with the the material property of the inherent steel fibers you can mix different kinds of fibers so that we call it as hybrid in fact hybrid is is a very generic in this in this hybrid you can mix different kinds of uh, uh, fibers like steel polypropylene glass or you can mix different lengths that means 20 mm 6 mm like that that is also hybrid but in this hybrid it is a graded so if you call it a graded hybrid automate that means you are changing its lengths different lengths you are mixing you are also using different kinds of fibers so then means that means we are going to get the the best of the best okay so these are the actually the mono fibers uh, stress strain diagrams let us see what happens if i start playing with the graded and mono mixing and hybrid and all these things these are the experiments conducted in our laboratory by my students so here it's a graded steel you can see here and here you can see this is the main thing if you just i'll try to explain this graded glass graded steel. in the steel what is happening is this is a peak here and in the in here this is a peak so here what is happening before peak there's an improvement and here after peak there's an improvement right so if you catch this particular point the glass fibers if i just grade it properly grade, grade it i am able to manage the the deformation capacity the pre peaks that means pre ultimate and here i am going to get the post end that means if i mix both what happens i can get the pre and also post that is called the the strain hardening region and also the the strain softening region of what of concrete right 
so i can i can get the benefit of getting a higher deformations both in the both pre peak and also the post peak so this is a graded steel with steel and glass let us see the few more things hybrid graded fiber reinforced concrete and few more things are there so this is the interaction of course this is a slide so this is a matrix this is a fiber this is the interface this is actually the one that plays the the major role okay there yeah, that is the object this is the mixing so once you mix it you can see the fibers right here there is a big problem here this point is to be carefully understood while mixing there is a sometimes you if you take 2% of steel fibers definitely everybody feels a very great problem because the there is a balling effect so that means all the fibers will come into one place and they form into a ball so by properly said your percentage of your percentage of fibers is the same same 2% but what i do is within this 2% some percentage is a small some percent is large if i mix properly i can avoid this balling also i can improve the workability also right so this is what exactly this is the means where i have used graded i have improved the workability also there is another slide of course it is not included there is a balling effect so this is a bridging so the fibers are bridged are bridging actually the two pieces of uh, uh, which is broken here okay, just to uh, show you how actually the bridging effect will form that means what exactly is now the what is the technique and what is the uh, what is the mechanism of it so here the aggregate sizing that is the balling effect is the ma major problem here and aggregate size also plays an important role here by selecting uh, uh, this uh, fiber reinforced concrete and blending and all these things and if you select mono fibers you can select and you can play in that case there is again a limitation i can use a hybrid fibers i can use different uh, types of fibers or i can grade it i can grade and also hybridize and these are the various developments that has taken place so how to avoid balling how to use the aggregate size and all so now if you see the basic mechanism you can see here again the same thing the short fibers and this is the the large fibers this is a plain concrete and this is a micro cracks so these are the macro cracks that means within concrete what is happening is this is a mechanism basic mechanism once you start applying the load there is a micro cracks will occur once the micro crack will start the micro crack is bridged so the crack will not be allowed to grow so it will take another place another at another place another crack will form at another place another crack will form like that the whole mass gets into smaller smaller cracks out of once it, it reaches that saturation stage that means multiple cracking so that is exactly the the strain hardening region right that is strain hardening so before reaching the peak itself there will be like lot of micro cracking once it reaches the peak then the macro crack that means then the larger fibers or high strength high modulus of elastic fibers will come into picture and then it will provide the the post peak deformation capacity so pre peak deformation post peak deformation that is a strain hardening fine granular matrix whatever we comes to hand homogeneity and the cause ultra dense matrix ultra dense matrix extremely low water cement rate be made and this is established uh, uh, cements of a b c d category where the three four categories of the uh, slag is used here 653 and cement is is a used and the fine sand and uh, thank you very much sir that uh, regarding ductile uh, hello jazat sir uh, yes yes they have muted uh, sir may i proceed yes 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 continue Yes, okay, sir. okay, okay. Uh, so the seismic strengthening technique is one of the solution for earthquake disaster mitigation techniques. So in generally, unreinforced masonry walls are failure of two types. First one is in plane failure mechanisms, and next one is out of plane failure mechanisms. So next slide represent how do URM buildings behave during an earthquake. We see that these are the basic components of masonry buildings. These are the roof. These are the foundation slabs. these are the walls and these are the opening for door and windows 
and during earthquake the floor slab tends to move rigidly during a horizontal directions and this gets one directional one uh, diagonal gets contracted other diagonal get extracted that's why these are the concept of in plane that's the, that means the the, uh, re the rectangular wall goes to parallelogram diagram these are the uh, number a direction of force on wall critically determines the earthquake performance these are the in plane failure mechanisms and opposite corner is the out of plane failure mechanisms next these are the historical review i have represented just one slide this is uh, a pancake failure of tobacco factory in Massachusetts building during 26 July 1963 in a central part of Skopje, Republic of Macedonia, due to Skopje earthquake. Next, uh, we are used for geocentric as a studying materials. What the concept of geocentric is a polymeric material? Then a product which is manufactured from a polymer material used with the soil reinforcement, rock, art, or other geotechnical materials, which is an integral part of a similar project. So, Systems. A number of geosynthetics are available in building. Geotextiles, these are two types, open geotextiles, normal geotextiles. Next, geogrids, next, next geomembranes, next, geomembranes, next, geomembranes, next, one is geopets, and last one is geopets. Composites, geosynthetics are very popular, now it trains, and all of the structures, that means our similar structures, natural structures, are included in geosynthetics, even as an infrastructure. Problem identifications that this is the masonry walls suffer diagonal crack due to in plane shear failure mechanisms and out of plane bending mechanisms. I have already determined unenforced masonry structures are brittle in nature because of updating code. Masonry building require strengthening and retrofitting. So, next slide, next masonry, most of the heritage buildings, these are the our uh, pride of our history, these are the most of masonry buildings are masonry and these are required for need strengthening. These are my objectives of this study. First one is to give an overview, to give an overview of the various strengthening methodology worldwide and its suitability in the context of Indian. Because we have India, the same structures of Indian and outside of Indian, masonry is very popular. Next, to assess the in plane shear fuel mechanisms of unrestrained strengthened and strengthened brick masonry wallets using geosynthetic materials with different geometric patterns and compare the results to investigate any improvement of the same or not. Next, to investigate the effectiveness of geosynthetic material as a seismic strengthening for out of plane bending performance of unrestrained masonry walls that are prone to fail during an earthquake. Next, these are in plane investigations and out of plane investigations. This in plane investigation is determined by American Society of Testing Materials, ASTM E5. And these are out of plane investigations. These are determined by American Society of Testing Materials E518. And these are presented the diagonal compression test. These are the strength that is controlled. And these are the diagonal strength pattern. Next is footprint bending test for out of plane bending investigations. Next, my results. These are uh, the display. slide represents the picture view of the specimens and picture view of the no graphs. So, first one is in plane failure mechanism, which are investigated by ASTM E519, E518. These are the diagram tested for control specimens or unstrengthened, and these are the load versus deformation graphs. Here we see the load versus deformation graph for unstable patterns that means 25.02 kilonewton and deformation is 5.2. These are retrofitted cross pattern for in plane fuel mechanisms and this represent the 42.3 kilonewton and corresponding out deformation is 6.2. So already it is better achievement for in plane fuel mechanism. Similar like that for out of plane investigations which are determined by ASTM E518. Here we see the control specimens for tested specimens. Here we see the graph load versus deformation, and this graph represented maximum failure uh, load 15.2 kilonewton for uh, deformation is 4.3. And similar for that diagonal pattern for diagonal for, uh, for cross pattern for diagonal for cross pattern that means such a 32.3 for 8.2. So these are the better improvement for the cross patterns.
next diagonal shear strain and flexure strain according to ASTM E5 word 9 this is the calculation for shear stress determinations for massive panels we have calculated as below uh, 0 0.707 into PA and that is the uh, flexure strain we have calculated and this is the calculated you can see the similar like that in question 36 and for the these are my conclusions. The student specialists in this field look at information from one student, that is student for both in the round. Respectively, the diagnosis of the test is to enhance the statistics percentage to 39 percentage and from 72 to 80 percentage. For the more diagnosis, we have both students. Next, thank you. Thank you. So, one student, why should we ask this different question? Capability. And last one is this point of the people in the community. Capability, diagnosis experience a significant increase for our honest student to diagram respectively. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Khan. I say uh, definitely a nice presentation. And uh, in fact, you are my student, so I should not put any question. Uh, let, let us seek uh, one Thank question you, from uh, audience side. Audience, please. Hello. From, yes. Ha hello, myself Devojit Mitrodai. Is the uh, sir? May I have a question uh, regarding the geosynthesis as a sustainable material? Is it a cost-effective material? Can I use it as a cost-effective? Can you elaborate? Yes, of course. It, yes, 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 yes. Of course, it is cost-effective. Uh, due to cost, due to cost-effective, the control specimens. If we uh, uh, if we assemble for cost control specimen for one assemble, this in Indian INR 166. Uh, for the cross pattern which are best improvement that, that is 186 so the uh, and, and, and is strict strain improvement is more than nice that means 50 uh, 32 percentage is greater than for, for low cost that means plus 16 rupees minus if we add then 36 percent more improvement so that's why this is called mm -hmm. low cost as well thank you Hasim sir and thank you Nanda sir for their nice presentation hey welcome sir have a good day Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, I uh, request the second presenters 510 self compacting duplicate using tire rubbers. So, uh, Mr. Misra, M. Misra, is present. 510, paper ID 510, self compacting complete. Anyone with 510 ID? Shall I call uh, 511 or 510 is there? Yes. No, sir. Yes. Mo sir. Mm. She has yes. started. Please. Okay. Yes, we are not getting any other any slides. There, sir. The participants there. Uh, sir, uh, uh, sir. Uh, uh, PPT from our side. Uh, yeah, yes, hello. Yes. Sir, share PPT from our side that Jojati or uh, Professor Kali can share this. Okay. And uh, we should tell uh, Madhusmita Madam uh, to stop sharing. Okay, sure, sir.
मैडम हेज स्टार्टेड फाइव वन जीरो already your screen is here you just open that uh, ppt you just open that ppt we can see your screen you just hello how to go out of that no let's say that hello yes मधुसूदा मैडम यू कैन स्टार्ट इट I think uh, I think uh, the co-author can uh, present if the audio is not uh, uh, clear. The co-author can start, please. मधुस्मिता मैडम आर यू एबल टू लिसन अस हेलो सर यू कैन स्टार्ट बिकॉज यू हैव शेयर द पीपीटी यू कैन स्टार्ट इट नाउ सर एक्चुअली माय वॉइस इज नॉट ऑडिबल देयर आई ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड सो नाउ आई कनेक्ट थ्रू मोबाइल फोन इज इट ऑडिबल यस इट इज ऑडिबल अच्छा मैम ओके Yes, sir. Uh, this is Madhusmitam self compacting concrete using tire rubber and recycled aggregate. The paper ID is five one zero. This uh, C Kala Handi Bhavani Patna. So here come the next slide. One is the outlines of presentation. So first is abstract, introduction, review of literature, material use, mix proportion, mixing and discussion. Under result and discussion, we will discuss about phrase concrete result and hardened concrete result. Then conclusion and then reference. So here comes the abstract. Uh, the present study carried out of an uh, for an experimental investigation of both phrase and hardened properties of self compacting concrete. Con And recycle aggregate. So here, waste tire rubber and recycle aggregate are replaced five and ten percent with coarse aggregate. And this go for seven. Uh, totally seven mixes are prepared, and the uh, it go for seven and twenty eight days uh, for their hardened concrete test and for fresh concrete test six tests are T five hundred test, J ring and U box test. Uh, so for this experiment, so M thirty grade concrete mix was designed. And uh, the design for self compactigate is amount increased and thirty five percent is of pore segregate amount decreased. Mm. And water cement ratio here taken for zero point four three four three and super plasticizer zero point four percentage. The introduction. 
so normally nowadays due to modernization people are uh, uh, changing their lifestyle so they change their motor vehicles uh, to new one for change and due, due to that the buildings are demolished and the numbers of waste amount is increased so here basically two waste we are using life or, or are changing the life so here i use waste tire from motor vehicles and recycle aggregate from demolished buildings um, so normally we are not able to discard or uh, uh, discard this two waste fully or completely so that's why we are using this for research work to uh, help to save the natural resources so basically we are using rubber uh why because rubber having the uh, ha actually having it having less mechanical strength but it increasing ductile nature in concrete and absorb vibrations similarly recycle aggregate having less strength more drying shrinkage creep and less resistance to chloride ion penetration uh, compared to normal concrete using natural coarse aggregate this is the objective of the uh, study uh, of the experiment objective of this experiment is to study the phase and hardened strength of self compacting concrete up after replacement of rubber chips and recycle aggregate these are some reviews of literatures then this is the material used so first material is we are using fine aggregate and coarse aggregate normally zone 3 fine aggregate we are using here and coarse aggregate Here, that is 20 mm down graded and binder we are using cement opc 43 grade then waste tire rubber that is from motor vehicles and cut it into chip size 5 mm size and 10 mm size then recycle aggregate that is also 20 mm down graded then super plasticizer uh, here is the properties of fine and coarse aggregate uh, so you can see second column represent the fine aggregate value of the uh, Um, fine aggregate value and the third column is represent natural coarse aggregate value which one is obtained from the lab and recycle aggregate value then this is the uh, concrete mix proportion here total you are taking seven concrete mix so first sc t0 r0 indicates there is no replacement of uh, tire rubber and recycle aggregate then sc t5 r0 indicates 5% of uh, 95% of natural aggregate and 5% of tire rubber 0% of recycle aggregate then sc t10 r0 represent 10% of re uh, tire rubber replacement 0% of recycle aggregate re replacement then sct0 r5 that is 0% of tire rubber replacement and 5% of recycle aggregate replacement then t0 r10 0% of tire rubber replacement 10% of recycle aggregate replacement then t5 r uh, sct5 r0 that is 5% of tire rubber replacement 5% of recycle aggregate replacement then sct10 r10 that is 10% tire rubber replacement of uh, 10% uh re recycle aggregate replacement these all are the quantity taken for the meter cube of concrete for the seven mixes with all types of uh, all types all types of percentage replacement and this is the uh, first diagram indicates the lab setup for slum cone test t500 test and jeering test then second diagram represent the lab test of v funnel test l box test and u box test and this is the result of your fresh concrete test results so here six uh, uh, fresh concrete test or fresh to six workability test are performed and then these are the results and these all results are satisfied our fnor guideline 2002 and 2005 then come to the hardened concrete test result so this is the compressive strength as you can see from this graph this uh, uh compressive strength are test for 7 days and 28 days so you can see the control mix that is sc t0 r0 without any replacement gives us the maximum uh, value of uh, uh, 7 days and 28 days approximately uh, 40 for 28 days and then second more second value second uh, highest value is sc t0 r5 uh genes 5% replacement of recycle aggregate then third value is uh, th third highest value is sc t5 r5 then fourth value is sc t5 r0 then fifth one is sc t0 r10 and sixth one is sc t10 r0 and seventh one is sc t10 
again so here we can see as the amount of rubber is increased the according that the strength is decreased so here comes the flexural strength similarly same pattern we are getting maximum for the sct0 argyrum for control mix then uh, second highest is r5 as reset is in uh, adding 5 percentage it is giving second highest uh, strength second highest strength as compared with norm uh, concrete mix control concrete mix but in all replacement you are getting more strength in that so similarly for split tensile strength then here comes the conclusion so he, here um, it satisfy all the all the test result fresh concrete test result satisfy our fnoc guidelines so in fnoc guidelines and basically we are seeing three types of test one is flow ability test and then so then passing ability test then filling ability test so flow ability test means it will satisfy two test that is your slump cone test and t500 test and uh, passing ability test that is for um, jeering test and v funnel test and for filling ability test that is for l box test and u box test so all are satisfying our fnor guidelines uh, so here i want to say that uh, as this waste material is increasing in our normal or control mix according that the strength is decreasing but in this uh, in this experiment in this seven mixes if, uh, if we will exclude that control mix then out of this six mixes when we are replacing 5% recycle aggregate then we are getting maximum value according all the replacement of coarse aggregate so as we are adding 5% rubber in that then the strength is little decrease but the other properties just like ductilite nature of concrete is increasing and it can absorb the vibrations so when we will go for the comparison of 5% of rubber and 5% of recycle aggregates so that uh, that time we can see the uh, compressive strength flexural strength and split tensile strength at all is is giving the second maximum strength as compared to other mixes uh, so th um, finally we can say the 5% replacement of ra gives more compressive strength at all ages with compare of the all other replacement the combined effect of 5% replacement of tire rubber and recycle aggregate was acceptable for construction field thank you sir these are some references thank you thank you uh, any question from participants please uh madam yes sir hello hmm. uh, why you have replaced only 5 to 10% what is the basis so actually this is the uh, waste material if we go for higher percentage so basically the strength is decreasing that's the thing not exactly for uh, any uh, uh, that's why i am asking have you gone on which the strength is decreasing so i i already went for that i did the experiment but Achha, okay okay, okay then uh, any other question uh, let me ask one question why the term you have used the cell compacting cell compacting so actually uh, normally cell compacting uh, is the concrete which one is compact with automatically by its own weight so if we we'll go for conventional concrete that time we have to use a vibration or we need to tamp it to for the compaction so basically compaction is doing to remove the air voids and air locking inside the concrete so in this self compacting as the coarse aggregate amount is decreasing and fine aggregate amount is increasing So definitely, the weight is increasing. So that's why it will be settled by its own weight. So that's why it's a self-compacting concrete. Thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, now I request the five one one. Please. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yes, you uh, can start. You. Uh, is it audible? Yes, audible, audible. Yes. Okay, okay. uh 
सर स्क्रीन शेयरिंग इज एक नॉट विजिबल ऑन बोर्ड एक्चुअली एट द बॉटम पर्सन यू सी देर इज अ म्यूट म्यूट स्टार्ट वीडियो ऑन शेयर दैट प्लेस यू जस्ट क्लिक ऑन शेयर एक्चुअली कनेक्टिंग आ रहा है बट कांट कनेक्ट ऐसा If you are getting problems, then we can share your PPT. You just uh, tell us to move. Ah, yes, yes, sir. Yes, okay. yes, sir. Uh, Subhashree, madam. Subhashree, madam. Sir. Uh, madam, uh, PPT slide. Correct. Yes. 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 टॉपिक इज थर्मल पॉवर प्लांट वेस्ट बाय प्रोडक्ट एंड यूटिलिटी इन कॉन्क्रीट माई सेल्फ लोमेश महाजन एंड माई कलीग्स इज एस आर भगत दैट इज अ कनेक्शन इश्यू सो दैट इज वील जॉइन लेटर द एबस्ट्रैक्ट द मेन पार्ट ऑफ द नियरली वन वन सेवन इंटीन कोल बेस्ट थर्मल पॉवर स्टेशन एज वर्किंग कंडीशन इन इंडिया and lots of uh, among in the working condition in uh, all over the world but about the 71% of electricity share is through the thermal power plant uh, as compared to the indian scenario western northern india eastern or southern side all over the plants of thermal power plant electricity generated by thermal power plant so all this thermal power plant produces by product in the huge amount and these by products which is known by fly ash and bottom ash and uh, this by product directly dumped on the nearby area or uh, thrown into the low lying area uh, if this will fly ash it is used in the concrete it will be beneficial for the society and the sustainability the paper present possible advantages to incorporate it into the concrete Fly ash, bottom ash, and pond ash has potential to act as binding and the filler agent. The fly ash is a used as a supplementary cementitious material in the production of Portland cement concrete. A supplementary cementitious material, when used in conjunction with the Portland cement, contribute the properties of the hardened concrete through the hydraulic or the pozzolanic activity. Uh, as such supplementary materials include both pozzolans and uh, hydraulic materials also in the recent decade the research has uh, demonstrated that the high dose of the level 40 to 60% of the fly ash of the thermal power plant is being used in the structural applications as the dosage level uh, as shown the less than 15% of the mass of cementitious material are uh, classified as a low class 15 to 30 percent classified as a moderate, 30 to 50 percent classified as high, and above 50 percent is very high. A uh, dose is is used as a massive construction. The generation of fly ash in India, as a uh, we see since of 1947 to till the 2017 and onwards, it is the graph is increasing as the generation of electricity. increases and directly proportional to the fly ash generation is also increases now now the days is uh, around 250 million tons to 300 million tons fly ash is generated all over the thermal power plant and the nature of fly ash as the fly ash is the by product of burning pulverized coal in the electrical generation station it is a unburnt residue that is carried away from the burning zone of the boiler by the flue gases and then collected by either mechanical or the electrostatic precipitator or the separator uh, and the fly ash is a pozzolanic material already i am uh, told that it is a contain of the amorphous alumino silicate with the varying amount of the calcium and csh gel is the formation is a very a uh, closer with the cement csh gel as the pozzolanic reaction as a beneficial for the concrete in the increase the quantity of the cementitious binder phase that is the csh gel 
and the system is uh, uh, available for the gives the benefit of the property as the effects uh, also i told the properties and effects of the flash in the fresh concrete workability is improved and the water demand is reduced for most ply ashes concrete is more cozy and segregate less improved compatibility bleeding is reduced especially at the high replacement level in case of the dam uh, dam construction you can use uh, flash uh, because of the bleeding is reduced especially after the second point is setting time the extended uh, especially in the cold weather certain combination of flash cement and uh, other chemical admixture uh, may cause the rapid and severely retard and certain temperature third heat of hydration also reduce at the normal level of replacement and class c ash has the to use the high use heat for example above greater than 50% fly ash it is a good reduce of the heat of hydration and fourth point is early age strength early age strength is reduce especially at one days reduction is greater for the fly ash ef plus and the higher replacement level as grows Uh, actually it is a long term strength is increase and early age strength is reduce uh, these are the some properties of the flash uh, also similar properties uh, uh, found in the use of the bottom ash but the bottom ash uh, as it is a more uh, fine uh, more grain size as i uh, the half the the substitution of the portland cement or the fractional substitution of fine aggregate it is mostly used uh the bottom ash extended uh, amount of water loss by bleeding the bleeding time and also the water discharge rate and the higher the bottom ash substances the concrete the greater the impact on the uh, these are the some advantages of the fly ash in brief the fly ash and the water ash can be used as a reduce environmental pollution burden on the concrete uh, ingredients such as the uh, already uh, schematic views are represent the cement production will be reduced as we uh, consume uh, most of the part of the by using fly ash the improvement of the chemical and mechanical properties of cement with uh, respect to the nano particle and it is expenses uh, also reduce uh, ultimately the social uh, life or the structural life of the society will be beneficial uh, Uh, all the conclusion it is uh, has uh, recognized around the world that the utilization of a enormous sum of the fossil power has uh, made different antagonist effect on the environment as a corrosive rains world wide warming this paper has uh, endeavored to cover a wide range of information so that the pursue can way better get if the flash of the kind of utilization the flash in spite of the fact the fracturing natural contamination it is an important crude fabric for the different application among the regulations and the legislation uh, it is a potential uh, in the flash to use uh, in the upcoming days and uh, areas having the large prospect of the thermal ash utilization need to discover for the increasing overall utilization of flash in india the state and district law need to promote flash utilization in concrete okay uh, it's okay sir thank you sir it's over thank you mr nazam uh, let's open to the participants any questions yes any question uh, it, it's a brief review uh, the next also paper is mine so uh, next paper uh, is uh, paper id 512 oh, one minute one minute uh, one minute one minute yes, sir. Please, please please yeah yes, so, yes, yes. Uh, okay okay sir. okay so mr mahajan what is the limitation yes, sir. Uh, can you uh, tell me in brief what is the limitation of this uh, waste used in the concrete a uh, limitation it means that actually uh, whenever you need the uh, higher strength or the early age strength is uh, important that case is the fly ash is not suitable because uh, it has a low uh, strength uh, gain property uh, yes strength is lower and uh, also second is a uh, fly ash uh, 
is available uh, all over this uh, places but uh, most of the places are far from the city or the available locations of the construction site so uh, every place is it is not uh, compatible to use a fly ash but uh, the alternative materials as a supplementary uh, we can uh, as a choose as a supplementary material Okay, you have used. Uh, uh, I think it's a literature study. Uh, uh, you ah, yes, mentioned, yes, sir. Uh, you have not mentioned any any uh, references in your uh, presentation. Ha ha. Actually, so, uh, uh, please take care. Please take care. Okay, thank you. Yes, next yes, presenters. Sir. Yes, sir. Next presenters. Uh, sir, next uh, presenter uh, is uh, also mine. Uh, the investigation of flash concrete by slum cone and compaction factories it is an uh, experimental part uh, in this uh, we have gone through the investigation uh, investigation of flash concrete with respect to the slum cone test and uh, compaction factor test uh, at the supplementary or alternative materials to cement has been an emerging field as i already told in the previous session as the civil engineering field the concrete ingredients have become modern due to the need of reducing global warming material scarcity problem uh, flash is used to replacement of the partially in the concrete therefore the concrete mix has changed their characteristics as obtained by the normal concrete Uh, the proper investigations always are required for perform measurement and to measure the fresh concrete property and the slum contest uh, sir is it a screen visible actually i thought screen not visible uh, yes 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 visible please proceed please go ahead visible okay okay sir okay okay the slum test uh, has become the most frequently performed due to the practicality of the recommended equipments uh, and the uh, experimental protocol there is a every uh, concrete test first of all we need the slum test and after the slum test value we go further investigations so the slum test involve the cone behavior under the action of the gravitational force the slum check realistic wave uh to the gauge and uh, we move for the workability the concrete slum test and the compaction factor test are used to determine the consistency of fresh concrete before it's set uh this paper has focused on the testing the 54 mixes having the various water cement ratio like 0.5 0.55 0.6 0.45 0.4 0.4 especially i have chosen this water cement ratio because uh, i have uh, uh, performed the uh, various trials uh, with uh, 0.3 to 0.6 uh, water cement ratio but uh, most of the water cement ratio fails uh, as uh, some slump values goes uh, suddenly down or the reduce So the bleeding of the segregation is also observed in some few cases. So I have dedicatedly choose the some uh, few water cement ratio. The flash material possible satisfactory the workability properties due to their similar oxide compositions. Due to the fineness of flash, the less bleeding observed than the control. And the introductory part uh, already I have told in the previous uh, slide uh, section or previous. paper that is the flash is the most important and the concrete has concrete industry is a, a emerging field to grass to supplementary cement ts fabric of uh, flash or the pozzolanic material and pozzolana may be a characteristics it is a suitable to containing silica and receptionist frame it could be siliceous and uh, alumferous fabric uh, it also flash is the one of the foremost uh, commonly used supplementary material Uh, from the past two three decades, uh, because uh, it could be a waste item coming about from the combustion of the coal, and uh, it is uh, being utilized in the pozzolanic material in the concrete. Since uh, of its capacity in the moving forward, the uh, concrete properties both within the new and solidification area, and the fresh property of concrete impacts on the hardened properties. Initially, hardened property uh, which are not judged by uh, easily. So we go through the fresh properties of the concrete. Let's be gravity 2.7. Uh, there are two tests performed. One is sampling test, and second is uh, compaction factor test as as per IS code 1199 1999.
प्रेस कॉल एंड सस्पेंशन फायर फंड थर्मल पावर प्लांट इट कॉन्सेंट ऑफ मोस्टली स्पेरिकल ग्लॉसी पैटिकल ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स केमिकल एज वेल एज मिनोलॉजिकल कॉम्पोजिशन एन ऑब्जेक्टिव to develop the alkali activated brick material using industrial waste class f bentonite and bentonite is a different proportion of a that great <coughs> combination of the sodium hydroxide and calcium oxide then scope physical characterization of collected of flyers and bentonite homogeneous mix of bentonite flyers is 40 60 and 60-40 proportion. Preparation of <coughs> NC1 and NC2. NC1 is one mole and NC1.5 is mole. Solution prior to the casting date of combination of sodium hydroxide and calcium oxide as per mole of N2O and CAO, that is 1 and 1.5 mole. Casting and curing is alkali activated maintenance flyers. Is best and ambient condition compared to the compare system as a different curing age and curing temperature. I have used two materials. This is flyers and bentonite, and two solution alkali solution sodium hydroxide and calcium oxide. This is the methodology. Methodology is one is N two O one mole and C O one mole and N C one point five is 1.5 mole and CO 1.5 mole and uh, <coughs> this is a flyers is 400 gram for uh, AB 40 means it is 40 degree temperature and AB 60 means it is 60 degree temperature and curing age is 720 age and 60 days and this is the OMC MDT graph of flyers and bentonite the first curve is the uh, OMC MDT of uh, flyers is 1.378 gram per centimeter cube and OMC of flyers is 11.28 percent. The second curve is uh, <coughs> bentonite and its uh, MDT is 1.35 gram per centimeter cube and OMC is 28 percent. Then this is the XRD image of Flyers and bentonite. The major element of flyers is quartz and albite, and the bentonite major element is quartz, aluminium oxide, and mount modernite. This is the second figure is the same analysis of flyers and bentonite. The in image, first image is flyers, the image is spherical, and it is a smooth surface. The second image is bentonite and it is non-uniform and the shape is prismatic. And this is the result and discussion. <coughs> this is the compressive strength graph during days and compressive strength has to is one mole of 60 degree temperature and the curing days is three days, seven days and 28 days for uh, 28 days is compressive strength is for 40 degree temperature is 59 kPa and for 60 degree temperature the compressive strength is 79 kPa and the other <coughs> 3 days and 7 days are very less compressive strength so I can use as 28 days compressive strength and this is the second graph of the 1.5 mole solution and again it is 3 days, 7 days and 28 days for uh, 40 degree temperature. That Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's a good presentation in fact. Uh, yeah. Mr. Rao, any, any questions from the participants? Okay, uh, no question. Uh, let me put one question. Uh, yes. What is the increment over the standard bricks, the clay bricks? Uh, you know, uh, what is the, how much percentage the strength is increased 
over the standard clay bricks. Do you have any idea standard clay bricks? What is the strength, minimum strength required? Class A bricks? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from participants? Well, now I invite the, the next paper ID at 514, please. Uh, excuse me, sir. Actually, 514 in the morning, uh, they have uh, told they are unable to present. That's why uh, another paper from Bagal, sir, will be presented uh, because he has uh, submitted earlier. We have not kept in the schedule. Uh, so, Bagal, sir, is requested to pre present his paper. Okay, okay, please. Please go ahead. Now it okay. is visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mars uh, multivariable <coughs> uh, regression analysis, and uh, we have seen uh, some people they call it as a black box method, or some they tell it as a white box method because in that we don't know what is happening inside it. But for dividing all these uh, parameters into two categories, one is uh, for testing, another one is for matching. So, if our results match, then if a, another beam is given with a, some other cross section and material, if the material property is known to me, then uh, if I will put all these equations in a single equation, I will get the stiffness. Then, after that, we have tried with weighted aggregated sum product assessment WASPAS method for solving these equations and all. So, I have taken high strength beams. The BH is the beam, the beam size is 125 into 250 mm. It is with M60 grade concrete, plain concrete in the core, but the outer 35 mm thickness ferro cement with four numbers of mesh layer, but there is no core concrete in the, yeah, there is no reinforcement in the core. L4H. UT, sorry, here the uh, major uh, mistake is SSCT, it is not SSCT, it is SSUT, uh, influenced by the state of torsion. As I am telling the state of torsion, state of torsion means it is according to the reinforcement, not over the parameters of ferro cement. The percentage of error is within a limit and so we can take or we can allow or we can take the SSUT values. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Vera. It's a good one, no doubt. So, any question? Any question from the participants? Yes, uh, I think they are adjusted. No question. Uh. <laughs> Manda, sir, at least half the question Yes. Sir. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sir, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, what uh. type of we have used for analytical study? Of Mars method and the uh, WASPAS method, sir. Uh, this Mar uh, uh, sir, uh -huh. sir, uh, this Mars method, as we are telling it, it, it uh, what type of study means? Uh, whenever uh, suppose I have conducted uh, seven uh, seventy beams, out of seventy beams, I have given fifty beams uh, for that testing purpose. They are uh, showing one equation. If we put these fifty beams, out of taking these fifty results. They are giving a one equation. If we put that equation with other say 20 beams, if the result is matching, we can say our uh, equation is valid for all these things. We are taking okay. through that one. And uh, only, because, one, uh, uh, only yes. one equation that is your valid for yes, the other. Yes, yes. yes. Because uh, to valid that equation, you will have to take at least 70% uh, of the experimental results for matching and 30% of the results for testing. If you are matching and testing, both are coming good, then only you can take these equations. Yeah, yeah. That's why this method is otherwise known as a black box method, because we don't know what is happening inside that. 
when they are giving this that's why some people they are telling it black box or white box yes yes thank you thank you so much so now uh, will you conclude or any participants any other participant left uh, no sir there are, there are no participants uh, uh, already we are we are in uh, uh, reaching in one, the last one of yes one. yes so, yeah so uh, uh, as per the schedule we are lucky to finish yes and, yes uh, <laughs> uh, yeah uh, so uh, let me congratulate the uh, i thanks the all the the presenters and as well as the participants also uh, because they are interactive questions definitely improve the quality of the research uh, research work done by the different participants uh, presenters okay now uh, let me conclude uh, our part, first participants uh, mr hasim ali khan who discussed about the geosynthetic as sustainable material uh, for the architect protection of national buildings and uh, he obtained the uh, he suggested a low cost technique for the standing of wall panels next presenters uh, uh, Mish, uh, mishra uh, she was telling Mr. about the modest industry yes so her present uh, her speak using tire rubber and recycled aggregates and uh, she suggested the 5% con combinations the rubber and recycled aggregates give the better strength now the third presenter uh, lomesh mohajan uh, topic was uh, thermal power plant waste by product and its utility in concrete um, he discuss about the state of art review uh, in fact the nice uh, presentations then the, the fourth presenter uh, lomesh again uh, lomesh mohajan mr lomesh mohajan uh the topic was investigation of bias concrete by slump cone and compaction uh, factor so uh, they achieved the uh, 50% replacement of the bias and with a uh, various uh, water uh, water cement ratio and uh, the workability uh, uh, the they got uh, this workability because of this bias uh, the fineness of the they uh, the use the fineness uh, of the uh, that uh, you know, bias uh, and uh, they uh, they concluded that uh, it is not giving that bleeding no next presentation uh, in fact uh, the characterization of alkali activated betonite with uh, bias bricks uh, by mr brown and uh, they suggested that uh, with one curing uh, it is giving an action strength the bricks is giving an action strength uh, the present uh, the earlier schedule uh, presenters was absent and it was replaced with uh, one more presenters uh, by the organizing committee and the topic was the uh, recent development and future prospects of manufacturing of uh, the uh, broad gauge uh, railway shippers using quest so a intensive review of different types of uh, shippers used uh, by the indian railways and suggested the uh, the polymer composites uh, for the future prospects and uh, the 515 for like uh the uh, 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 properties of concrete which center flyers ideas as substitute flyers ideas and uh, they conducted uh, uh, intensive experimental uh, research and uh, they found that uh, replacement of high high ideas uh, from 10 to 100% and uh, they got uh, maximum compression increment in fact uh, they got uh, good in also so the 40 percent increment in compression strength uh, they suggested then the last presentation is uh, made by uh, professor behra who is a very close friend uh, to me uh, so the many friends are there in that uh, in particular that college so i thanks all the uh, the uh, the members and uh, uh, the last talk topic uh, that is uh, given by uh, professor behra determination of ssuv and uh, hsc out phosphorus and uh, mrs method uh, so uh, they uh, they suggested uh, that uh, the earlier techniques that frp steel frp uh, they have the problems uh, in the torsion 
and they suggested some uh, numerical techniques, uh, the analytical techniques, and solved some few things. And they uh, they were concluded that mass and gas fusion effect is the best techniques to predict the personal effect in the mass of gas structures. Thank you all. Thank the organization for giving me this opportunity. Yes. Thank you uh, very much, sir, for nicely handled this session as session chair. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Nanda sir. Uh, so Thank the you. concluding uh, remark uh, can be given. Uh, the concluding remark can be given uh, by the co-session chair. Yes. Thank you, sir. Hello. Yes. Conclude it. So thank you, thank you, sir, Nanda sir, for the uh, sessioning this chair very nicely. And thank you all the participants to attend the uh, program and give. Hello and yes. The, the next session will start at two thirty p.m. Uh, and I request Nanda sir to be present for the validatory section. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. Definitely, I will be there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank okay. You. Then. Thank you. Sir, can we conclude? Can we stop? Yes, 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 yes. Please. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Then. Thank you. Sir. Huh? Sir, the next session. Uh, uh, sir, uh, next session uh, uh, will start from uh, two thirty. Two thirty p.m. Huh? Yes. So. Uh, so, yes. yes, sir. Can you give the session link here for the session two, a session four? In the session four, uh, in the chat box, box here, no. Once we no, no, uh, close this, sir. On the chat box, can we give the session uh, four link? Sir, uh, the, I will close from the run. We'll close right now this. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, so, so, we'll give uh, in the uh, WhatsApp or that mail. Already we have sent that. Uh, no, already we have sent it. Okay, okay mm -hmm. then.
So already I had uh, sent a message in the chat box uh, due to some technical uh, difficulty. Uh, Professor S K Das is unable to join with us. Okay. Now he joined. Okay. We'll start our program. Let us wait uh, for a few minutes. Okay. He will join, no? Hey, he may join. Uh, he is trying to his level best to join, but it is unable. Okay. He is unable to join okay. due to some technical difficulty. Okay, so let us okay. wait for a few minutes. Otherwise, we will start our session. Yes, sir. Uh. Gopal sir, good good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. We are waiting for you. Uh, actually, sir, I am trying my best to connect. a uh, keynote speaker but uh, till now i am unable uh, he is trying his best to connect but yes sir we will wait for another 10 minutes gopal sir i have already uh, 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 posted uh, uh, i am there i am uh, 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 already uh, uh, koi dechi lecture le lecture le teacher mein kon na teacher mein kon de pauna di aap करिया Uh, hello uh good afternoon to all of you uh, as uh, the keynote speaker he is uh, till finding some difficulties uh can we do one thing uh, we will start our session uh jajat sir proceed to uh introduce our uh, session chair okay sir thank you sir sir giri sir, sir is present Yes, sir. Yes, I am present. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, let me introduce our uh, uh, chairperson of this uh, session four, uh, Dr. Devanath Giri, who is working as associate professor at VSS Vitti Bulla, and Professor Giri has completed his M Tech from Nature Alka in the year nineteen ninety six, and a PhD from IIT Khodakpur in the year two thousand ten. He has seven national journals and two number of books. With this, now I would like to welcome Professor Giri to chair this session. Thank you. Uh, thank you, and it is grateful that you are giving my chance. And unfortunately, our key speaker Sarasar is not unable to connect. Anyway, we will try our best. Otherwise, we will start our session. And uh, since uh, keynote speaker is not available, I think uh, it will be now better to give the. some more time to the participants to discuss their papers and also we have get a uh, time to discuss with them okay so i request uh, the, to start the session uh, sir may i request uh, uh, either uh, giri sir or uh, jajati sir they may read who are the persons uh, presenting before that we can uh, tell their names uh, yeah, yeah. are presenting they can be ready for this one Mm-hmm. Okay. Sir, okay. Okay. Sir. Good afternoon, Professor Giri. Good afternoon. Ah, oh, sir. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> How are you? How are you? 
I am fine, fine. And uh, our uh, already online classes yeah. are already started. Ah, our online classes are already started. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you are Bhuvneshwar or Bhuvneshwarla? No, now I now and not today I am in Bhuvneshwar because there are two days holidays. Yeah, yeah. So sixteen and seventeen, and I have taken two day holiday so oh. that I can stay here for uh, more one or two days. Yeah. And someday I will come back, go back again. क्लासेस including sasna also now already uh, classes has been started for the whole semester only for the first semester you are waiting for yeah, the yeah. counseling other semester classes are already started including uh, first semester mtech also it already started from uh, 10th it has been already started yes. okay okay kerian as a session chair okay, okay session. thank you thank you let us start okay sir uh, uh for this session 4 uh, there is a uh, uh, total eight number of papers are there uh, first is gt uh, 102 which is effect in geotechnical property soil we uh, presented by i think r samal and then gt 103 polymerization of bauxite residue to use as a construct review bandopadhai and d and then gt uh, 107 mdd and uh, omc of black cotton soil enforced with uh, randomly distributed banana fibers lb patel and ss 8 uh, study of load and settlement behavior of expansive soil enforced with granular pine using natural aggregate na and b sultana gt 109 erosion studies and rehabilitation of beach along west coast of india pk suresh r and ms nadeshan stress and response of jk nights and then gt 111 evaluation of liquefaction potential of coastal uh, alluvium Uh, using spt data a comparative study pk mudli p uh, karna and mr samal one two total and time series analysis of ground water parameters of kolahandi district odisha india m patnak and m priyadarshini so total eight number of papers are there so हेलो ओके ओके आई थिंक ऑलरेडी पीपीटी ओके रश्मि रंजन सामल यू स्टार्ट योर प्रेजेंटेशन हेलो हेलो यस सर स्टार्ट 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 कैन आई सर या 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 ओके ओके गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल एंड माय टॉपिक इज इफेक्ट ऑफ स्टोन डस्ट एंड लाइम इन द जियोटेक्निकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द क्ले सॉइल and my paper id is uh, gt102 so now i'll start this topic so and yeah, no, you 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 one thing why introduce yourself also uh, you take one or two minutes to introduce yourself as a assistant so, professor hello 
हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल सर एम आई ऑडिबल सर आई एम हस्पिंद सामल करेंटली आई एम वर्किंग एज ए आसीस्टाट प्रफेसर एट सिलिकन इन्यूट अफ टेक्नोलोजी सम्बलपुर एंड इन दिस कन्फरेन्स आई एम अल्सो प्रेजेंटिंग दिस टपिक इफेक्ट अफ स्टोन डस्ट एंड लाइम इन द जिओ टेक्निकाल प्रपर्टीज अफ क्ले सइल कैन आई स्टार्ट सर ओके स्टार्ट ना uh outline of my presentation is actually in this uh, work i have taken uh, clay soil for my study actually clay soils are replaced by a material which is known as stone dust and uh, lime is uh, replaced stone dust with the soil actually i have uh, carried out various types of uh, test uh, in this uh particular work likewise on confined compression test and uh, compaction modified uh, proctor test uh, hey, for comp hello okay okay start uh, uh and uh, uh, another is uh, <coughs> liquid limit and plastic limit test to find the type of the soil so first one is objective then materials taken in the study then methodology result disclose discussion then conclusion so uh, in this work my objective was to study effect of stone dust and lime on the properties of the clay actually uh, what are the materials i have taken in this study first one is uh, i have taken uh, clay soil in this uh, work and another is stone dust actually my uh, first question is why i have chosen stone dust as a replacement uh, for the clay soil various materials are there for replacement of the soil various materials are there but question is why i have chosen particularly this stone dust actually stone dust has ability to form a strong and non porous surface that's why i have chosen stone dust as a uh, material for the replacement of the soil again i have chosen lime why lime i have chosen for this uh, for my work because uh, lime acts as a binding agent between the stone dust particle and the soil grain but uh, reason is that what are the reason the reason is that when uh, adequate quantities of the lime and water uh mr rasmanandan samal your voice is not audible yeah yeah here not audible no. <clears throat> hello somebody may call him okay sir but his voice is not audible audible <clears throat> हेलो रश्मि रंजन सर हेलो he has been disconnected so we should call him by over phone otherwise uh, yes it is difficult to but the, uh, the phone number they have get not given in the chat box can we write jada sir can we write in the chat box uh -huh. you can write you are not audible na no, already i am ah ebe ebe asla the sir hello okay okay yes yes uh, actually i am sorry for the inconvenience first uh, uh, uh Uh, i have already discussed about objective and uh, yes yes you from, start from uh, slide 4 uh, slide 4 uh, what are the materials uh, i have taken uh, for this study one is stone dust 
uh, one is uh, clay soil another is stone dust another is lime lime so why in this stone dust for my study because its ability to form a strong non porous surface and why i have chosen the lime for my study because lime acts as a binding agent between the stone dust particle and uh, soil grain and uh, the reason is that uh, uh, actually silica and alumina released by the lime uh, forms two compound one is csh which is calcium silicate uh, uh, CH uh, calcium aluminate hydrates. Uh, hello, sir. Am I audible, sir? Hello. Yes. Hello, sir. Uh, I am. Am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Audible. Continue. Continue. Uh, thank, thank you, sir. And uh, what are the methodology I have taken? Actually, the clay soil, uh, our campus. Uh, college campus and stone dust were acquired from the Debodhi Jharsugda and uh, the test I have already conducted uh, uh, one is standard factor test another is uh, unconfined compression compressive strength uh, test another is California bearing ratio test another is liquid limit and plas plastic limit test to find the type of the clay and uh, I have replaced uh, the stone dust first I have replaced 10% soil with stone dust again soil with uh, stone dust again 30 percent soil with stone dust again 40 percent soil with stone dust again i have added the one percent lime two percent lime and three percent lime in the soil means in this past mix 90 percent soil plus 10 percent uh, stone dust i have added one percent uh, lime that is one mix second mix is 90 percent 10 percent two percent lime third mix is 90 percent 10 percent mix one percent lime again i have uh, added two percent lime li uh, again i have added three percent lime so these are the mix generally i have used uh, for this study and same test also carried out the the test which already conducted in the soil same test already carried out in each mix so uh, these are the graphs uh, actually this is a uh, 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 liquid limit uh, test uh, graph the graph obtained by uh, from the liquid limit test uh, i found that uh, the soil is intermediate clay by analyzing the liquid limit and plastic limit i found that uh, the this is intermediate clay again uh, here is the graph uh, for the uh, standard proctor test uh, uh, means for the soil only soil and here omcr 12 for 12% and uh, maximum dry density 2.35 again uh, the, the density moisture content graph uh, for the 90% soil and 10% stone dust is this much 2.51 mdd here omc value 12% here also omc value are 12% but mdd value slightly increased uh, again the graph between uh, density moisture content relationship of the 80% stone dust and 20% stone dust here the MDD value just uh, decreased from 2.51 to 2.45 and he, another graph also 70% 30% here MDD value also uh, decrease by 0.01% means to uh, 0.01 2.44 again here also MDD value just increases uh, for the 60% and 40% again here MDD value just decreases but OMC value same again OMC value same and MDD value just uh, decreases. Uh, next one is uh, MDD value means uh, in all the uh, results the MDD value are nearly uh, 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 nearly nearly equal means uh, just uh, 0 0.1 0 0.2 difference but uh, nearly equal. So MDD has no effect actually. And uh, here is uh, the uh, here also 2.43 2.53. And uh, now I want to compare all the result uh, in this uh, slide. The optimum moisture content are same. Optimum moisture content are same means blue line significant MDD signifies MDD and red line uh, signifies the uh, optimum moisture content. But uh, the value of the MDD just uh, slightly vary. Slightly vary uh, 2.35, 2.51, 2.45, 2.44, 2.58. Uh, this is all about uh, the variation between MDD and OMC. Again, uh, analysis of CBR value. Analysis of CBR value means uh, this line stands for 0% lime. This line stands for 1% uh, lime. 
this lime stands for 2% lime but uh, here i have taken 90% uh, plus 10% stone dust here uh, for 0% uh, uh, lime is uh, greater means uh, more amount of the severe severe value is for 0% lime but uh, for 1% lime just uh, uh, decrease 1.082 uh, 0.68 but when i have added 2% lime that is decreased from 0.68 to 0.257 again for the um, uh, for the mix 80% plus 20% here also uh, there are some diff we, we, we have seen a different result means say uh, for 0% 0.94 and for 1% lime 0.42 and for 2% uh, 1.37 again another mix 0.34 here almost uh, in 0 0.0% and 1% almost same but uh, in 2% increased this is all about uh, cbr value again uh, this is all about ucs value actually for Again, no sound, trust me. So, one point eight six. Here suddenly decreased. So these are the result of the variation of UCS value. Again, uh, in the discussion, I have already told that 10% uh, to 4% I have already replaced and added 1%, 2%, 3% by weight of the lime. Uh, actually. It was observed that uh, now uh, I want to discuss about this uh, unconfined compression compressive strength. What happened actually? Uh, it was observed that the unconfined compressive strength value of the soil with replacement of the stone dust and uh, addition of the lime with a different proportion is decreasing as the percentage of the stone dust increasing and the maximum dry density was observed for the mixture of 90% soil and 10% stone dust and 1% lime and the minimum value of uh, UCS was observed of mixture of 60% of soil 40% of stone dust and 1% lime and uh, if we analyze the California bearing ratio it was observed that California bearing ratio standard and addition of the uh, lime with different proportion it decreasing except addition of the 2% lime uh, and uh, the maximum severe value was deserved for the mixture of the soil 80% and 20% stone dust and 2% lime and the minimum california bearing ratio value was observed for a mixture of 90% soil 10% stone dust and 2% lime after analyzing all these things uh, 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 the conclusions are first conclusion is Optimum moisture content value remains same with increase in stone dust content and uh, lime. Second uh, conclusion is the value of maximum dry density, unconfined compression strength, and California bearing ratio decreased with increase in percentage of the stone dust and lime. Hence, uh, means final conclusion is hence stone dust is not a proper substitution of the clay. What are the reason? Actually, the main reason is that. Uh, actually final conclusion is stone dust is not proper substitution of the clay but question is that what is the reason why the stone dust are not uh, uh, final substitution of the clay uh, uh, the reason is that the stone dust uh, particle has very low adhesive force very low adhesive force that's why it is uh, impossible or it is not possible to bind the stone dust uh, stone dust uh, particle with the soil particle with the soil grain due to the low adhesive value so uh, uh, now i conclude my uh, presentation any question hello yes hello hello any um, huh. admixtures like lime and uh, stone dust have you tested uh, the soil what is the characters of the soil what is the liquid limit what is the uh, uh, yes sir yes sir have you tested uh, the, this is the liquid limit uh, test for the only soil and this is the uh, okay. is the standard doctor test for only soil okay, without the, lime and uh, without two stone what is the liquid limit you find uh, i have uh, found the you liquid found limit the as a uh, mm, the 23 actually here 23 
what is the need sir. of using hello, sir? and uh, if it is only 23 hello then what is the yes, sir if it is only 23 hello and what is the shrinkage limit what is the shrinkage limit uh, i have not conducted the shrinkage limit test only plastic limit test and uh, uh, liquid limit test actually so i have not uh, shown that uh, a line uh, that uh, plastic is chart here no, no, no. Is uh, the value of the hello sir what is the hello? plasticity test what is the plasticity index value uh, plasticity index value uh, actually sir i have not uh, shown here actually uh, by so then why you are using chart. this to line then why you have tried to use lime and uh, Uh, because in this particular cycle, is the problem in uh, that? I thought, sir? hello, sir. Is there problem? It is easy. Is it problematic soil? Oh uh, yes, sir. Clay soil are problematic soil because clay soil is very low strength. That's okay. why okay. I have uh, chosen the clay soil. Why? Uh, what is the what is the what is the sure strength you got? You are saying it is not a. Oh, uh, you see. Soil. I would on the clay soil index. Hello, sir. It is liquid limit is so low, man. Its liquid limit is so low; it is uh, no, never a uh, uh, swelling soil. So, uh, what is the problem? Then clay soil uh, is it? What is the shear strength? Have you got any shear strength value? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the I I I have only conducted the unconfined compression test, and the value is uh, yes. yes. The uh, you say uh, shear strength value of various mixes. So you are saying it is a soft soil, so that is why you try to increase it, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I don't think it is a. It's not a. a, a all the clay soils are not problematic soil. If it is a during, if it is if it is a. Ah, uh, but here parameters are less, and then only you can uh, go for this test. Okay. Addition and. Uh, Uh, for fold off and I lost. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I saw. Uh, sir, uh, uh, yes. I have one question. Yes, sir. Great, sir. Ah, uh, uh, the question I is uh, you one. have. Ah, uh, the question is you have written. Ah, uh, OMC sir. value. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Ah, uh, OMC value is not changing. It is remaining constant with the addition yes, of lime content. Whatever may be yes, the sir. lime content. OMC value yes, is not changing. Yes, sir. The OMC value is not uh, changing. OMC value is constant. Twelve percent. Uh, is it so with addition of lime? Uh, OMC yes, sir. Value actually, value is taken constant. I think. Huh? OMC value is taken constant. With <laughs> that, the mixture content they have prepared that sample. No, they have they have written na with the addition of lime. Yeah. They are varying the lime content. And uh, in other result also, in two no, percent also. No, when we will go on. Ah, uh, when we will go for increasing the lime, I think yes, it cannot be same. Uh, actually, here I uh, I have uh, taken the one percent, two percent, three percent. If I have taken, uh, if I took ten uh, percent lime, twenty percent, I think it may um, increased. But. Uh, 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 I have taken one percent, two percent, very small amount. One percent. No, one percent lime of what? One percent lime of the total uh, so soil amount and uh, means uh, total soil. Means the total so material. Then, uh, it should vary because uh, when we are taking the quantity in terms of uh, soil. Yes, sir. I yes, think sir, it should vary. Cannot, uh, uh, whatever okay. thing he has uh, got it. Oh, okay, 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 okay sir. So we cannot do anything. Okay. 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 Okay.
uh, you have not mentioned but there is a major uh, parameter to discuss the uh, various various one of the parameters specific gravity whenever you go for the omd or uh, uh, compaction test your specific gravity plays a major role and secondly what is the initial water content of the sun dust when you measure, when you added the sun dust to your soil uh, whether it is oven dry or it possesses some initial water content have you taken that into uh, your uh, consideration or not you have not uh, your your uh, presentation is silent about the initial water content of the uh, your stone uh, dust and secondly uh, lime oh, you are taken the lime but uh, it is a commercially available lime or it is a uh, industrial waste lime which one is you taken Lime we have taken, na one percent, two percent like that we are varying. But question is whether it will be waste product, uh, industrial product, industrial waste product, or you know directly purchase it through the market. Because if you purchase the market, it is pure one. It has been pure because they have added something. So it has the property will be more. So that also you have not mentioned. Then specific ability of what uh, your uh, lime also you have not mentioned. But these are the some. Uh, Uh, thing, uh, I think missing in your presentation. Anyway, you have taken a uh, thing to decide whether you can replace the clay with stone dust or not. And finally, you concluded it has not been uh, substituted. You have done, but uh, the topic may be improvised by considering some other parameter also. Okay. okay, thank you. So anybody can ask, or we will go for the next uh, participant. Sir, actually, I think Rasmiran Samal, uh, Rasmiran Samal is having some technical issue. That's why he is uh, not able to uh, give the, uh, his voice is not audible. Actually, sir, network issue is there. Showing here due to low bandwidth mm -hmm. or local computer condition. Okay, ha. Huh. Because that institute, he may be saying the institute, the institute is somewhat in interior place. Yes. 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 From the Sambalpur city. Okay. We can go. Ha. We can go for the next presenter. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Rashmi. Let's look up next. Uh, next uh, uh, paper ID GT one zero three, geo polymerization of oxide residue to use. Uh, hel hello, hello, sir. Uh, hello. Hello. Ha, oh, sir. Is it possible, sir? Okay. Uh, you have completed. You just stop your screen sharing. We are moving to next uh, presenter. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. A upadhyay and uh, degree. J T one zero three. Cannot be joined because he has not uh, submitted his thesis. He is a full paper. Okay. So we will go for the next. Okay. Oh. Yes, sir. Then next paper is J T one zero seven. M D D and O M C of black cotton soil reinforced with uh, randomly distributed banana fiber. L B Patel and S S Pusarkar. Uh, you just minimize. Stop your screen sharing. You have stopped your screen sharing. Sir, are you sure it's visible or not? No, no. no. Sir, can we? Sir, now visible or not? Not visible. But the... Okay, sir. But okay, okay. I am trying. Oh. Again, I am trying. Again, I am trying. Jagat sir, you can share. Tell them. Okay, Gopal sir, we have enough time. Let us okay, try. Okay. <laughs> yes. 
Yes, yes, it is busy. Okay, sir. Good afternoon, one and all. Myself, Lalita Pati, student of Dr. Pusutka, sir. Under, I am doing PhD, sir. I am a sir, research scholar, student of Dr. Pusutka, sir. My presentation topic is MDD and OMC of black cotton soil reinforced with randomly distributed banana. Hello. What, sir? Hello, uh, sir. Your voice is getting echo, sir. You, uh, I think uh, you have not, you are you're not using your phone. Uh, yes, your sir. Voice sir. Is yes, sir. I am using headphones, sir. Microphone. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay. So my presentation topic is MDD and OMC of black cotton soil, reinforced with randomly distributed banana fibers, and paper ID is GT one zero seven. Under the guidance of Dr. Pusipu, sir. Outline of presentations are abstract, introduction, materials and methods, results, and conclusion. Abstract. Sir, so, uh, my work on expansion soil, that is, uh, means uh, black cotton soil, which is causes very serious problems to the civil engineering structures. And uh, property of uh, black cotton soil is swelling and shrinkage. Soil swells during the rainy season and shrink in summer season. So we have to, I have to improve the property of black cotton soil by using reinforcement. So for reinforcing banana fibers are used for reinforcement material and also to the uh, to understand the property the uh, property of soil density and moisture content of soil by reinforcing the soil with randomly distributed banana fibers and uh, also done the laboratory test for uh, checking the properties of black cotton soil. Uh, I had collected the black cotton soil from Damanga village near Jalgao district in Maharashtra state. The fibers were added in varying percentage of 0%, 0.5%, 1%, 1.5% and 2% by dry weight of soil and also in varying length of 1 cm, 2 cm and 3 cm. The SPT test were also conducted to study the effect of banana fibers on dry unit weight and OMC. It was observed that MDT decreases and OMC increases with increasing percentage fiber and length of fibers. Twenty percent, mostly sir. Twenty percent uh, black cotton soil is available all over the world, and in uh, our region, black cotton soil is mostly available. Black cotton soil available in Jal, uh, in uh, near Jalga, the Damanga place that is the village, and due due to increasing water table causes soil cause swelling and shrinkage by our causes soil and cracks develop due to uh, swelling and shrinkage property cracks are developed and. Differential settlement occur. So, uh, to cover that problem, to minimize that problem, so uh, we have to reinforce soil reinforcement by using the banana fibers. And in the, for that purpose, addition of fibers to use for soil for soil. And by using the banana fibers, soil mass increases its strength, bearing capacity, stability, significant improvement in shear strength tensile strength and other properties of the soil. These are the two materials, black cotton soil and banana fiber. The soil from the Damanga village having high plasticity and high free soil index 
for was selected for the study i had taken three sam three soil samples from different three villages nashirabad takarkheda and dhamangao and for every soil i had done plastic limit test liquid limit test and then find out plasticity index free soil index and out of three soils dhamangao soil having highly plasticity index and uh, free soil index is also high for dhamangao soil so Uh, so uh, dhamanga soil is taken for the for the study and banana fibers banana fibers are uh, also taken from waranga village near jalgao and uh, by uh, banana fibers taken various percentage of banana fibers 0% 0.5 1% 1.5 and 2% and uh, also length is differ 1 cm 2 cm and 3 cm then the properties of black cotton soil i had done a test on dhamanga soil having liquid limit 85% plastic limit 62% plasticity index is 23 free soil index is 70% and omc is 29.6% and mdd is 14.9 kN per meter square and after doing this study soil is classified as a mh then i had done uh spt test standard proctor test for different length of banana fibers for 1 cm length for 2 cm length and for 3 cm length for 1 cm length uh, uh, omc for 0% is 29.6% for 0.5% 35% for 1% 35.4 and uh, for 1.5 36 like mdd is also uh, omc increases from 0 to 2% and mdd for 0% is 49.49 and mdd is decreases from 0 to 2% when as the percent uh, for 1 cm length as the percentage of fiber increases omc increases and the mdd is decreases Similarly, for two centimeter length of banana fiber, for zero percent, twenty nine point six percent is OMC, thirty two percent four point five percent, thirty four percent for one percent, thirty five percent for one point five, and thirty six point six percent for two percent. And MDD is fourteen point nine for zero percent, fourteen point four four point five percent, fourteen point one for one percent, thirteen point seven for one point five percent, and thirteen for two percent. similarly here as the length of sorry as the percentage of banana fiber increases omc is increases and as the percentage of banana percentage of banana fiber increases mdd is decreases and same for 3 cm length for the 3 cm length omc is increases and mdd is decreases from 14.9 to 12.74 kn per meter square and these are the graphs as the percentage of banana fiber increases mdd is decreases similarly as the percentage of banana fiber increases omc is increases and the conclusion is the black cotton soil was reinforced with banana fiber varying length and varying percentage the addition of banana fibers influences the properties of black cotton soil by using uh, percentage of banana fiber and the various length of banana fiber and optimum moisture content of reinforced soil increases as the percentage of banana fiber increases as and mdd is decreases as the percentage of banana fiber increases for fiber less than 2 cm length 0.5% banana fiber shows maximum increase in omc while for 3 cm length 1% banana fiber and the decrease in mdd is marginal at 0.5% or 1% banana fiber so any questions sir my voice is audible any questions sir 
ओके ललिता थैंक यू फॉर प्रेजेंटेशन थैंक यू फॉर योर प्रेजेंटेशन थैंक यू सर आई हैव सम डाउट आई हैव सम डाउट हां सर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द बनाना फाइबर यू हैव यूज्ड दैट इज इन फ्रिज फॉर्म इट इज आइदर इन ड्राई ड्राई स्टेट और इट इज इन ग्रीन स्टेट सर ड्राई ड्राई फाइबर्स then sprinkle water after that again uh, place uh, soil then uh, spread banana fibers and sprinkle water uh, means about uh, up to omc like this mixing and then uh, mix uh, properly mix and that soil is used for okay then uh, i have some doubt because ah, why you compact When you compact yes, the soil sample, when you compact yes, the soil sample, uh, that length of that fiber, variation of less than fiber, may not play Haan. a major role because that uh, banana fiber has very weak in strength, strength. It has no strength. So during the process Haan. of compacting, their length may be destroyed. There may be destroyed to that uh, lowest form. Uh, so what is the uh, importance of using the variation, variation of the length? सर बट एज वे इंक्रीजेस हाँ सर बट एज वे इंक्रीज द लेंथ ऑफ बनाना फाइबर ओ एम सी इंक्रीजेस सर एंड एम डी डी डिक्रीजेस दैट इज दैट इज इंक्रीज नॉट ड्यू टू द लेंथ आई थिंक दैट मे बी इंक्रीज ड्यू टू दर लेंथ ऑल्सो क्राइटेरिया सर लेंथ ऑल्सो क्राइटेरिया फ्रॉम ना लेंथ इज ए क्राइटेरिया फॉर अदर एनफोर्समेंट टाइम बट फॉर यू आर यूजिंग द बनाना फाइबर बनाना फाइबर इज ए वेरी वीक इट हेज नो फुलिंग स्ट्रेंथ सर सर बट रिजल्ट्स आर आल्सो गेट सर रिजल्ट्स आर आल्सो गेटिंग इन एसपीटी टेस्ट एज द लेंथ ऑफ बनाना फाइबर इंक्रीजेस एमडीडी डिक्रीजेस एंड ओएमसी इंक्रीजेस वन थिंग वन थिंग लेट मी व्हेन यू इंक्रीज द लेंथ ऑफ द बनाना फाइबर इट्स वेट इज आल्सो इंक्रीज दैट मींस यू आर एडिंग मोर परसेंटेज नो सर नो सर बाय ड्राई वेट ऑफ सॉइल सर बाय ड्राई वेट परसेंटेज अबाउट बाय ड्राई वेट ऑफ सॉइल then how do you increase the length of the banana length of the uh, reinforcement that means you are using less number of bananas uh, according to weight sir percentage percentage according to weight according to weight you are measuring the amount of the banana fiber then you cut it into length weight weight ha cut into length 1 cm length 2 cm length 3 cm length and then take by ha uh, then take by percentage of weight of dry weight of soil My my question is, suppose you are yes. using two mm banana fiber, then compact it. Then after compaction, okay. what is the length of the banana fiber? Is it two uh, mm two centimeter uh, or did decrease? Uh, after that, I uh, didn't check sir that length. Now, now you come to point. You now come to point. Okay. Suppose you okay. are using okay. three okay. three centimeter banana banana fiber, uh, then uh, one uh, one centimeter banana fiber. Then you compact it. So after okay. compacting, what is the shape of the one centimeter of banana fiber, and what is the shape of the three centimeter banana fiber? That, that totally mixing with soil, sir. That totally mix with soil no, due to compaction. Ha. Ha. Oh, after because your strength will be getting after compaction. So okay. after compaction, what is the what is the role of the length? It has been already destroyed because these are not yet they are not the geosynthetic or like other fiber. material so that its length will not be disturbed but after compacting length will be disturbed and secondly okay. it is a biodegradable material so whatever yes. result you are getting there after few okay. days after i think after 7 days or after 3 days also okay. if you test it then you will getting a very surprisingly less after that after that we have to coating sir i have we have to coating by chemical after that but uh, ha but uh, recently uh, i have not coated with banana fibers okay very soon you are after completing your experiment you very soon you getting a good result because of that fiber okay but okay so you okay. get that has been destroyed because of the generally a biodegradable so biodegradable okay okay okay, okay. okay. Uh-huh. okay, okay anyway so. you are doing that so.
uh, let us, uh, I request other to ask any question, then we will go for the other. Uh, Mudul sir, you may ask. Hello, Mrs. Patil. Yes, sir. Uh, have you, uh, uh, you have not done any test uh, on uh, uh, the liquid limit and the plastic limit after using uh, these uh, uh, fibers? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh. You have to see whether your liquid limit or plastic limit is increasing or decreasing. That you have to see. Okay, check. sir. Because okay, when, sir. men uh, criteria is liquid limit is high in case of a uh, black cotton soil, very high, okay. and sinkage limit okay, is very low. Am okay. I right? So you have to okay, see what, uh, what is happening. Uh, you are, what is happening when uh, you are using uh, this uh, uh, reinforcing. Then whether the, okay. what is its uh, uh, effect? Okay. It is uh, reducing uh, or not. That you have to check. Okay, sir. Just so, uh, add add these tests. Okay. Okay, okay. sir. Anyway, okay. good findings. These are good, very good findings. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. okay. So sh shall I stop sharing? Yes, yes. Now you can stop. Uh, next is uh, GT108 paper ID study of load and settlement behavior of expensive soil reinforced with granular pile using natural aggregate and uh, authors are MJ Rituparna and B Sultana. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, is it visible? No, no, no. Uh, is it visible now, sir? No, it's visible. It's visible now, sir? <laughs> piles uh, for a different uh, variation of line and triage and varying the L by D ratio that is length to diameter of the granular pile ratio from 1.5 to 3.5. You can see 1.5 to 2, 2.5, 3 and then 3.5. 3.5 is the entire length. So uh, what are the uh, materials required? The materials I've used here is uh, black cotton soil then uh, 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 geotextile which is uh, a woven uh, polypropylene geotextile which i have uh, collected from sun textiles uh, kolkata then the third uh, third material is natural aggregates which i have collected from ct college campus and uh, fly ash which is locally collected and uh, lime sorry fly ash is from ntpc talchir uh, lime is locally collected and black cotton soil is from nachoni uh, village uh, balugaon district so coming to the uh, setup and methodolo uh, methodology, the setup is uh, similar to CBR uh, testing machine uh, as you can see here. And uh, I have considered the uh, cylindrical mold of 175 mm diameter, uh, 175 mm height, uh, 150 mm dia and uh, I have taken um, the in the mold the soil is uh, prepared uh, and filled uh, the, in five layers with uh, heavy compaction and at the center I take a, uh, a stainless steel pipe of diameter 50 mm and a hole is created at the center of the soil sample the so and the, uh, then the soil is replaced. Then uh, in that hole, I place the uh, the geotextile, which uh, uh, which is cut into the same diameter, and it is placed by folding. Here you can see, and then inside that, the paste of natural aggregates, lime and fly ash is uh, charged. On the top of that, uh, 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 low, a footing plate of mild steel. Uh, a mild steel of diameter 150 mm is taken, and the thickness is 1 mm. 
uh, here you can see the uh, the setup this is similar to the cvr mold here at the center i have taken the granular pile on the top of it uh, the uh, footing plate is placed which in my case is the uh, uh, is the size of the entire diameter and then the sample is uh, tested in the cvr machine the load settlement uh, values are uh, noted down and then the graph is plotted with uh, uh, this uh, 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 the experiments are varied in five uh, different depths that is uh, by uh, varying the l by d ratio from 1.5 to 3.5 here you can see the combination of this for uh, l by d ratio 3.5 to 1.5 i have taken the first one is on un on uh, treated black cotton soil black cotton soil reinforced with uh, granular pi uh, granular pile with 67% uh, natural aggregate 30% ply ash 3% lime and then 60% natural aggregate 35% ply ash 5% uh, lime 53% uh, natural aggregate 40% ply ash and 7% lime these three combinations are uh, taken for every l by d ratio uh, starting from 3.5 to 1.5 so coming to the results uh, the uh, first of all i'll tell the results for the black cotton soil that uh, the, the nomenclature for the black cotton soil is ch that is uh, highly compressible uh, inorganic clay with plastic uh, sorry with liquid limit coming to 50% uh, sorry uh, 60.1 uh, which is greater than 50% and the uh, the plastic limit is 28% now uh, here you can see the uh, the load settlement behavior i have taken uh, three variations first i have kept the percentage uh, of ly ash or natural aggregates and lime constant then i have varied the graphs with uh, uh, the l by d ratios you can see all the curves are for different l by d ratios from 1.5 to 3 this is 1.5 to 2.5 3 and 3.5 you can see uh, the ultimate load for this one uh, for the maximum one the maximum l by d ratio is coming 26.76% more than the uh, 1.5 curve and uh, if you compare this with the next one as we increase the percentage of ly ash by 5% the uh, the ultimate load is coming 36% uh, more than the 1.5 uh, l by d ratio coming to the third one we can see the uh, the ultimate load uh, for the maximum percentage of ly ash and lime is coming to be uh, 38% more than 1.5 here you can see uh, going to the previous slides uh, the rate of increase is even low but as compared to the untreated soil it is uh, well uh, commendable now coming to the second variation i have kept the l by d ratio constant and varied the percentage of uh, uh, natural aggregates ply ash and lime so here you can see it is for 3.5 and the uh, the ultimate load is coming to be 192 percentage from the untreated soil it is uh, 165 percent for uh, uh, l by d ratio 3 and for l by d 2.5 it is 157% for 2 it is 131% and for 1.5 it is coming uh, 107% all these values are for 40% ply ash line going to the previous one you can see clearly there is um, as we uh, go from the least uh, l by d ratio to the most the uh, ultimate load is increasing hence the settlement is also reducing now the third variation where i have varied the ultimate load with l by d ratio so here you can see the maximum uh, percentage of ly ash it is 40% uh, and uh, 7% uh, line the ultimate load is ca uh, coming to be 130 uh, 113 percentage that is this for the least one for uh, 30% ly ash and line it is coming to be 99 uh, sorry it's 1113 uh, 113 kg and for uh, 30% it is coming 99.5 kg so by this i conclude that as the settlement is uh, um, sorry as the uh, percentage of ly ash and lime is increased and the l by d ratio is increased the settlement is uh, um, 
notice to be reduced and uh, the ultimate ratio uh, the ultimate load is in uh, is noticed to increase as we increase the lyd ratio and the percentage of li uh, lime and fly ash so for the maximum uh, 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 percentage of fly ash the uh, ultimate load is coming to be 192 percentage whereas for the uh, that is for 3.5 uh, LYD, whereas for the lowest uh, percentage of fly ash, it is coming to the 87%. Hence, it is uh, noticed that the LYD ratio, um, uh, with increased LYD ratio, the ultimate load is also increased and the settlement is reduced. And all the uh, results and the load settlement behaviors are, uh, are in accordance with all the, uh, the literature surveys I, I have made. So with that, Thank you. Any questions, sir? Thank you, sir. Any questions, sir? Oh, Vira sir, put it on the move category. No, 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 sir, you can start it. No, 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 start it, sir. Okay. Rutubuna? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, you have done a nice thing. You have done an experimental analysis. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. But uh, I have one or two query only. Uh, yes, sir. We have conducted the test uh, based on some uh, initially water OMD or you are uh, uh, inserting yes, the uh, you are inserting that column yes that shared column uh, yes, sir. by compacting in the mold. So what is the percentage yes, of water content you are using? So that is seventeen point eight percent, sir. That is uh, uh, we have carried out the OMC and uh, the OMC was seventeen point eight. So that I have taken, sir. You have taken that percentage for the compaction, na? Yes. Okay. Uh, can you tell me in one uh, what is the limitation of your test? Sir, the I limitation. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, I appreciate that you. you have done a lot of things. So your conclusion is also very good. But uh, yes, can you tell me what is the limitation of your test? Sir, yes, sir. I can say that uh, one limitation is there, sir. Sir, uh, the granular piles generally they fail uh, by lateral uh, uh, forces, sir. Means it fails by buckling. When the lateral load is more, it might uh, it fail. So whenever uh, um, for large projects, very large projects, it can, I don't think it is uh, uh, wise to use this because the piles will um, ultimately buckle and it won't be of any use sir. so for that uh, in 2020 uh, like i was doing some literature surveys and there are uh, a few studies in this granular pile where they are in, uh, they are in increasing the lateral resistance uh, the lateral reinforcement uh, they are providing and they are increasing the strength sir, uh, against buckling so that is okay. one uh, Limitation. But what is your limitation your experiment? You have done in my experiment. Uh, in your experiment, can you guess uh, there will be some lim there is a some uh, experimental limitation? Can you guess uh, what are you want to say? Uh, so yes, sir, I think uh, the uh, the uh, plate that I have given on the mold, I think that is one doubt, sir. The doubt the 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 is the main is your uh, lateral confinement because you are, oh, yes, uh, putting, your, uh, you are putting in a mold. So, when you yes, compact sir. it, the automatic surrounding soil has been given a st full strength because you are compacting. That's why if I am asking what is that your initial uh, water content, you think that you yes, are compacting sir. with your uh, OMD. So, once you yes, compact it, OMD, it has almost uh, uh, optimized its strength. Then you are putting a uh, we are removing sand inside yes. from the central position. So automatically yes. the soil, surrounding soil has been already compacted. So, so yes, when sir. it has been already compacted in where we are using some granular pile, pile so your result will be uh, definitely getting good result because of that compactment. So if your surrounding soil is not compacted, then uh, you might get some different uh, result. Anyway, uh, you have done a good thing and I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you for the presentation. Okay. Thank you, sir. 
the other may ask another uh, question. Whatever they want, they will go for the next question. Tax or we will go for the next Mudali sir. I, I think he's present now. I may ask his doubt if you want any question. Then otherwise you will go to the next participant. Yes, sure, sir. Uh, presenter is requested to um, stop sharing. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. We have next participant, paper ID GT109, Erosion Studies and Rehabilitation of Beach Alum with uh, West Coast of India. K. Suresh, R. Sundaravadi Velu, and uh, Manuesh Nadesan. Okay. Okay, you can present with the permission of Sasan Chair. <laughs> and started with hello uh, hello is it audible uh, yeah it, it is audible but uh, yes yes your screen Okay, it is fine right now. Okay, very good morning, very good afternoon. I am uh, Dr. P.Q. Suresh, working as a consultant in Department of Ocean Engineering, IIT Madras, and my co-author is Professor R. Sundar Bidivelu, who is the professor and also the chair professor of the Institute, IIT Madras, Department of Ocean Engineering, and uh, Manu S. Nadesan, who is an associate professor in Department of Civil Engineering, Adi Shankara Institute of Engineering and Technology, Kaladi. It is a place where it is a college which is coming under the Stringeri Sharada Bidam. And uh, we have, I am just presenting a case study of uh, uh, the rehabilitation of the beach along a road because these roads projects are very important and coming up these days. And it is very important to see that the, the, the erosion is minimum. So, I am just presenting a case study near uh, Cape Comrie. Is it audible, sir? Hello? Yes, 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 yes sir. Okay. Okay. Now, the outline I am giving, the methodology, of the objective, methodology, results, and conclusion. Next slide. Yeah. Oh. Actually, this is our coastal. This is our coastal area. It starts near Kanyakumari. I think all of you may be aware of it. It's a very famous tourist center, and uh, our Tamil Nadu coast is coming up to this point. This point is uh, this area is called Neerodi. After it, it is Kerala state. This coastal length is around 60 kilometer, and it is one of the most thickly populated uh, coast of the state. And the problem with this coast is during. The, this cost will experience monsoon during June to September. Tamil Nadu will have already two monsoons. One monsoon is southwest monsoon from June to September and northeast monsoon from October to December. But this, in this particular cost, the uh, most active monsoon is southwest monsoon. And we have a road also running along this cost. And uh, the most of the employment here is the fishing. And uh, the population is also doing a lot of fishing activities and the connectivity is getting lost. There is also a port located at this point. We have got some three or four small fishing harbors located along this coast. And uh, I am just showing you, this is the this is how the area looks during the southwest monsoon, especially during the month of uh, June, uh, July and August. Next slide. Next slide. Now, what we have done, this problem was referred to us by the government of Tamil Nadu to IIT Madras 
and uh, now i am also working as a adjunct faculty in this institute that is how i came into the picture first we have made for any problem before taking up the studies we have to do a field recognition survey and after the survey based on the observed data we have to do a desk studies and based on the desk studies we have to formulate the proposal and then do some modeling either it can be physical model or numerical model then once it was completed what we have done was just we have gone for a post project monitoring whether our things are correct or not in that angle just we have gone to and the entire study was sponsored by government of tamil nadu public sector department next now so first we have we walked from we just we have a walk through survey along this course along this 40 km that is we have never walked 40 km in between the vulnerable stresses so what we have found was here the slope is slightly shallow up to this place and from here the slope is very high so what will happen is in any coastal thing whenever you have a very steep slope this area is coming in this region that is from here to here during high monsoon waves they will come and uh, hit the coast directly and it will have a very heavy run up so what we have done was we have seen observation how it see you can see the entire beach is getting totally eroded even though they have carried out some uh, as a crisis management some heavy structures were dumped in this area you can now just see this is the initially it was done, uh, dumped for a, as a crisis management now this is the state of this structure so the uh, the stability of the section is completely gone we have just made observed all those things next and then we have done a desk studies using the satellite imagery that is up to this uh, this is our uh, fulcrum and from here to here we have one, one type of beach behavior and from here to here we have another type here we we have found that between 2001 and 2015 we have lost nearly 40 meters of beach but here it is only 10 meters of beach 15 10 to 15 meters of the beach so what we have found out was here uh, even though heavy heavy wave action is there along this coast this coast because of its shore uh, shore slope to some extent this is able to resist the hydrodynamic action we have done a small hydrodynamic modeling of how the waves will end, uh, propagate along this coast and based on that we have found that this reach is more or less critical and what we should do i will present in the next slides next no so, usually for any study the wave uh, if you take any hydrology the most important parameter is rainfall like that if you take any coastal engineering problem the most important parameter is wave climate how you get the wave climate previously we were having some published data or some sites from nova or nasa now our own indian government ministry of earth science we have we have a center called indian national center for ocean information systems and inquiries and from that we have taken the wave data and wave data will be analyzed along the slope of these how the, the ones we will get the deep water wave data deep water wave means it will be in in, in a, uh, that will be a measured wave in a water depth of minus 50 we are standing in a water depth of 1 meter so when this wave is undergoes propagation it will undergo different types of deformation it will undergo diffraction it will undergo refraction it will undergo shoaling and sometimes reflection also and this is the general wave climate prevailing in this area this is non monsoon from june to uh, january to may and this is from june to september and this is from october to december if you see the magnitude of the wave is very high during this season that is what we have found out and this we have to adopt for all other design purpose next slide now based on that these are all structures called groins which will be constructed perpendicular or inclined to the coast this entire uh, formation was done by professor sundara badivelu and his team i am also one of his team member and initially we have these are all small structures rubble mound structures but the rubble mounding is done in a regular pattern it is not randomly placed it will have a cross section it will have a base layer it will have a core it will have a armor layer 
So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 groins we have formulated. The, the length will vary from around 50 meter to 80 meter. And the spacing which usually adopt based on our experience and the code provision is 2 times the length. 2 times the length we will have, 2 to 3 times the length we can adopt. So, we have covered around 1 kilometer of the coastal stretches there. So, the advantage of this is once the waves come and hit, it will lose this energy and it will deposit all the sand here and it will it will not erode. Or if in, uh, initially, if you have a sand here, whenever a wave comes and hit here, this sand will take the onslaught and after the monsoon, it will come back. Next. And based on that, this is the cross section. It will have a base layer, it will have a core, it will have an armor layer. Armor layer, the maximum weight will be 2 to 2 to 2.5 tons. We will get stones. If you are not getting, if you are, the, all the design is based on the waves hydrodynamic study, which we have earlier made. Based on the wave climate, we have designed this and uh, finally give it for execution. Next. Now, once you constructed groin, the shoreline will undergo a lot of changes. So, you should know because you should get the clearance from the Ministry of Environment and Forest saying that your project will be a successful, it will not cause any harm to the other cause. For this, we have to do a numerical model and this is the base of the numerical model. The, the, the model is based on the predictions of Krauss and Harikai and these procedures were adopted by myself and my earlier Professor, Professor Sundar who was one of the topmost persons in Coastal Engineering, who was working as a professor at IED Madras. And we have, we have developed a model. Based on this model, we have done the studies. Next, next. And, uh, uh, okay, what it will give is, previously, like, go to the previous slide. Previous, previous, sorry, sorry. Uh, based on this, we can find out whether the beach will form between these two groins. To what length? What we have predicted was within one year, we have predicted that beach will form between these six groins and it will give a buffer to the next monsoon and the road will be safe. Next. 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 So, you can just see. This is the road existing before the construction of the groin. This is the groin which we have constructed. And a very famous temple is there which was having its connection with Adi Shankara. And they even for uh, their festivals, they could not bring their cart and idols inside. You can see, this is the ramp. Now, the same beach, after the construction of these groins, you can see how much beach has formed. Just you can see. The people are playing and how they are using and this is the coastal road. The earlier coastal road was like this. Now this beach will always give protection to this coast. And whenever, whenever any monsoon comes, the, the, this will take all the energy and the, when the monsoon recedes, it will come back. And this is another place near a church where you can see before the construction of the groin, how the coast was. And after the construction of the groin, you can see people are playing football. And to some extent, I can say we have done a very, very elaborate step. First, we have done a field survey. Then we have gone to uh, desk studies. Then we have done some mathematical modeling. Then we have done some predictions. Then we have designed the structure. Then all these things, we got the approval of the Ministry of Environment by state government. Then we have constructed. Finally, to some extent, we have reclaimed the beast. This is our success story. Actually, we are, IIT Madras is doing a lot of work in Orissa cost also. Penta Beach and uh, was done by us and that uh, uh, one famous uh, estuary is there. Uh, Chil Chilika, Chilika. Chilika mouth opening was done by us. Anyway, I thank the organizers for giving the opportunity with whatever limited knowledge I have, I have presented. Thank you. You can ask any questions. Thank you once more. Hello. 
यस 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 सर थैंक यू फॉर प्रेजेंटेशन डाउट यू हैव डन अ वेरी नाइस थिंग एंड आई हैव नो ऑब्जेक्शन और नथिंग एयर अबाउट टू योर प्रेजेंटेशन और यू वेरी नाइस टू प्रेजेंट बट आई हैव ओनली टू टू और थ्री क्वेश्चंस कैन यू प्लीज एलैबोरेट अबाउट योर न्यूमेरिकल मॉडल प्लीज एक्सप्लेन अ लिटिल बिट मोर अबाउट योर न्यूमेरिकल मॉडल दैट मीन व्हाट इज योर इनपुट पैरामीटर एंड व्हाट इज योर आउटपुट पैरामीटर एंड हाउ विल कंपेयर योर रिजल्ट विद द न्यूमेरिकल मॉडल ओके ah the input is the wave climate first you have to give a bathymetry bathymetry means the entire bed contour you have to give for each and every this is a online model each and every cross section you have to give the what is the cross section in this direction once you give the cross section next the input is you have to give the wave wave height and the duration of the wave height every 3 hours if you take one day we will get around 8 data like that we will get 240 data for one month so for one year we will get around 2200 2800 input wave data wave height wave period and wave direction it will give automatically it will give to what extent this beaches will form along this along each you you cannot give it at a time one by one you have to give first you have to give this cross section this groin and see how much beach is formed here next you have to give this then you have to overlap and do it this is what it does हेलो हेलो ओके हेलो हेलो आउटपुट आउटपुट व्हाट इज योर आउटपुट आउटपुट इज द बीच विथ द सी यू कैन सी द बीच विथ हियर दे जस्ट सी द बीच विथ 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 ऑफ द बीच दिस द हियर देयर इज नो बीच हियर नो बीच हैज फॉर्मड हाउ मच इट विल फॉर्म इन बेस्ड ऑन योर बेस्ड क्लाइमेट beach width the width of the beach sir okay sir yes yes okay okay to do na thank you presenter thank you for your presentation uh, sir uh, giri sir sir we move to another next presentation okay sir okay okay, okay sir okay. thank you okay, okay. Uh, next the paper id gt 110 stress strain response of compacted pond as reinforced with stone column uh, by डिपार्टमेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंट
uh, get destroyed by uh, that area, uh, lose its uh, shear strength, lose its uh, bearing capacity, that soil will get uh, highly compressible. So uh, in this, uh, uh, in this, uh, I have done work uh, on the uh, by footing load test. Uh, at the center, I have inserted the stone column, and that uh, stone columns has varying with the area ratio of uh, 10, 20, 40, and 60 percent, with the varying length uh, ratio of 0.25 L, 0.5 L, and uh, 0.75 L and uh, full length of the stone column which is with respect to the cylindrical specimen and uh, the material which i have used is pondas and stone aggregate pondas uh, pond which i have collected it from ralkla steel plant uh, and uh, that uh, stone aggregate is collected from the local market and for stone aggregate i have used the two size of the uh, stone aggregate that is 1 mm to 2 mm and uh, 2 mm to 4 mm and the experimental programs which I have done in two series of tests to carry out this work. In the first uh, test series, uh, I have evaluated the index properties and engineering properties of the pondas where I have done the grain size uh, distributions uh, and uh, consistency and index properties I have done uh, and, uh, in, uh, and also engineering properties where I have done the compaction, uh, compaction test, direct shear test and triaxial shear test. In the second test series, I have conducted the footing load test, uh, footing load test where I have uh, inserted uh, or reinforced that uh, so pond aspect with the stone column with the varying area and length ratio as I have uh, uh, mentioned in the introduction part. So in the uh, in this, uh, what I have got in the specific gravity, I got 2.30. And in grain size uh, distributions, I have got that this uh, pond ash is a sealed size. And in the compaction uh, characteristic, uh, what I have done in the compaction test, I have done uh, 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 done with the uh, five uh, uh, six number of uh, compactive energy uh, energy effort I have given to achieve the different uh, uh, most uh, different uh, moisture content and dry density. Because with that corresponding uh, moisture content dry density, I have tried to uh, uh, prepare the sample for the footing load test. Uh, and uh, uh, also with that uh, moisture content and dry density, I have prepared the sample for the direct shear test and the tri shear your test. And the result which I have uh, mentioned in this table, uh, this is uh, as I have a strain control loading machine and these are the result uh, where by varying the area ratio corresponding length ratio uh, in the 10. In your analysis, you have not mentioned the uh, what is the your zone of uh, liquefaction. You are telling that. Sir, it is your, mentioned, uh, sir. Sir, seismic zone 3, it is coming the Kendrapada no, 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 district. Liquefaction, liquefaction, liquefaction. At what depth liquefaction is occur? Because whenever you are analyzing, you have to draw two core. From that two core, we have to find out the your susceptible liquefaction depth, general liquefaction depth. At where it will be occur? Sir, in the we have taken the six coral data and uh, in in each. Uh, uh, from depth, we, we are getting liquefied cases. So the, these, uh, these locations, the, the respective locations are having uh, a risk of getting liquefied. No, no, no. My question is, whenever you go for any uh, liquefaction analysis, liquefaction in a successful zone, it is a mandate to find out the at what depth. Actually, it has, the borehole has been taken to very large depth. Yeah. Yes, sir. So you have to find out at which depth, because it will vary from place to place. So from oh, each borehole, yes, for each borehole, you have to identify the liquefiable zone at depth there or at at which depth liquefaction will be occur. Because liquefaction will not be occur at any depth. It will be occur at a particular zone. So have you analyzed or have you will uh, zone? You are getting the liquefaction analysis. You are telling that it, it is uh, John is liquefiable, but my question is, 
uh, have you identified the appropriate depth of the liquefiable zone? Because uh, no, sir. no such, uh, no sir, no such zone uh, has been identified by us. Yeah. Uh, you have not had your zone, right? Okay. Anyway, it is very nice, nice thing. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you. Without taking us. Extra. Anybody left or any participant left or it will be concluded? Hello? Anybody left for the further uh, presentation? I, I yes. think one more sir, yes. participant is left. Yes, sir. Last participant. Last participant. Yes. It's yes. paper ID GT112. Uh, statistical and time series analysis of groundwater parameters of Kalahandi district, Odisha, India. Uh, author, sir, M. Patnaik and M. Priyadarshan. Hello, Mr. Pragya, you can uh, stop sharing your screen. Thank you. M. Patnaik and M. Priyadarshan, you are requested to share your screen. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Paper ID GT one one two. I think, sir, uh, nobody is there to present this. Uh, Paper. PPT is not with you, Dr. Kali. PPT there, uh, PPT? Yes, yes, sir. But huh? uh, they are not, no, presenters are not there. Oh. Presenters are not there. Oh. I think we should wind up with this, with uh, kind permission of the uh, session chair. Okay. okay, so I will conclude here. Uh, I want to again congratulate all of all participants for a valuable presentation in the conference. And I also con congratulated uh, Dr. Kaliprasadna Sethi and other faculty members of Kalahandi Comet Engineering College for nicely presenting this webinar. I also thankful for the authority to give me opportunity to being, become a session chair for a technical session. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, you, Professor Giri, for nicely uh, presenting the session chair. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. Hello. Session 4 has completed. Session 4 has completed. So, but in one paper, one paper is left this session. Uh, yes, uh, sir. All total seven paper presented this session. Huh? Yes, total seven. seven. Total seven out of eight. Now, our principals are also joined, uh, I think. I think principals are joined. Hmm? Sir. Uh, principals are joined? Uh, I don't know, so let me check, sir. Uh, uh, no, no, sir, not yet. Sir, initially uh, Sar was there, after that uh, she has, uh, he has left. Okay, sir. So uh, now it's almost 5. So uh, the validator session is at uh, 5.30. But, uh, <laughs> but uh,
Can we start now? I Within think 10 so. minutes? Uh, yes, sir. Huh? We should leave. Uh, we should take a break for 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, 5, to, 5 to 10 minutes, then we'll start. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll take a break for, for 10 minutes. Then we'll start the valedictory function. Huh? Yes, sir, sir. Sir, uh, before that, we should ask uh, Moduli, sir. Sure, sir. Moduli, sir. Hello, Moduli, sir. Can you hear me? Hello? Moduli, sir, are you there? Sir, I want to I Hello, Professor Pike Moduli, Dr. Kali. Yes, sir. I can see him in the participant ah. list. Moduli sir is there, but ah. uh, due to some technical issue, I think we can uh, means we are unable to hear him. Yeah, yeah. I'll call to Professor sir. So participants are requested to uh, have patience and uh, thank you for uh, joining us and uh, the validatory session is very much uh, important and uh, we uh, again and again I will uh, request to all the participants uh, that uh, please be with us for another uh, half an hour. Uh, participants, may I request anyone of, uh, from you uh, may come forward and uh, share your view regarding this two uh, day uh, sessions. We have we had four sessions. So, if you want to share anything about this program, you can share. You are most welcome to the platform. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Welcome, welcome, sir. Welcome also, sir. Thank you. Thank you. you are looking very fresh. Sir, <laughs> <laughs>
your background is somewhat uh, different you see and now now i learned how to change the, change the background <laughs> yes sir this is same uh, background all the meeting and everywhere the same no sir the uh, yes sir there is the facility you can change your background we can show our college also like uh, but that is not there yes sir right. you can see me i am in front of, of our college good afternoon sir good afternoon sir good afternoon good afternoon <coughs> this is a just i call you so i hope this background will be good oh your background is right nice college <laughs> background <laughs> nice background this one ah, you, you, you are in front of covid hospital yes sir <laughs> <laughs> actually we are, i kept this background <laughs> <laughs> So the validatory function will start now. Yes. Oh, it's five. Five thirty, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Udali, sir. Hello. Hello, Udali, sir. Good afternoon, sir. I just want to check your audio, sir. Whether you are audible or not. <laughs> now it is audible. Yes, yes, Hello. sir. Yes, we can hear. Actually, we are having validation. Will start at five thirty. So yes. the uh, guests will join at five thirty, not prior to that. Already, I have given them messages. This this is tea break. If they can join, we can start. This is tea break. Actually, Kishor Panda will uh, provide us. This is a break. Uh, फोटोग्राफ ना पिकअप एंड A tea cup with uh, biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> so that will be too much. Nowadays we have to take uh, kada instead of this tea and coffee, sir. Are such a ghore na? Kada ta ghore. Sir, but secret. Bahar ek koi wani. Nara koi wani. Koi wani. Following this old tradition. Uh, we are uh, conducting this program from home itself no on online mode so, so i am enjoying my kada sir <laughs> no, no 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 regularly i used to take that one also <laughs> yes sir it is essential yes yes sir aap aap ke rahi gaye later aa rahe hain ji itna sara jaan mere pehle nahi ho raha tha नहीं नहीं सिर्फ ये रहा छंदी से बनना कौन से चालीस तंग रहा ये जो काम है एनपीए रो से से तो पढ़ते हो ये गोपाल सर इस सेरिंग समथिंग अच्छा सर
हेलो काली सर हेलो हेलो यस सर यस सर भाई सो आई एम ट्राइंग टू मेक देम कनेक्टेड वंस दे आर कनेक्टेड आई विल टेल यू वी विल स्टार्ट अ श्योर सर वी आर वी ऑल आर वेटिंग ओके बिकॉज़ आई हैड गिवन देम टाइम एट 5:30 नाउ आई एम गिविंग मैसेज इफ दे कैन गेट कनेक्टेड विल स्टार्ट अ ओके सर वेयर द बॉसेस इन द गेस्ट अच्छा है
principal sir has left or is there hello hello बोली सर हेलो 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 काली सर सर नो आई आई हम जस्ट चेकिंग वेदर यू आर देयर और नॉट एंड सम टाइम यू आर फेसिंग दिस सम टाइम यू आर फेसिंग दिस टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम नो दैट्स अ सर काली सर दी दे आर दिस जनरली हैपेंस टू मी यू यस सर दिस वेरी ऑफन वेरी हैपेंस टू इट मी आई डोंट नो व्हाई इट हैपेंस एट द क्रिटिकल मोमेंट आई फेस आई ऑलवेज फेस लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम सो व्हाई इट इज हैपनिंग ओनली विद यू आई डोंट नो दिस इज द दिस ऑलवेज हैपेंस सर राइट फ्रॉम माय इयरली चाइल्डहुड आल्सो दिस सेम थिंग हैपेंस एट द क्रिटिकल मोमेंट आई ऑलवेज फेल्स and few times uh, earlier you were saying uh, tell that uh, your current also gone <laughs> i think so yeah, yeah today also current was not there now uh, somehow current has uh, come uh, now i see that i think he has uh, connected uh, oh, hello asif yeah. hello hello you just uh, check uh, hello Kali sir, please check. Uh, uh, Mr. Asif Noor has joined or not? He yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Now it is audible, lah. Uh, I think you can see me as well right now. It is uh, testing is going on, right? That's what I understand. Okay, okay. So you are not. Uh, your video is not uh, here. Uh, we are not visible. You are not visible at present. I'm not visible. Let me try. Okay. Start my video. But uh, we Am are I waiting for Mr. No, no. Till uh, till now, you are not visible. Yes, yes. Now you are visible. I'm visible, ah? Huh? Yes, yes. Yeah, good. At least you start. No, no. Actually, we are waiting yeah, for yeah, Mr. Amani. I'm saying to start the testing that everything is fine as far as. Yes, yes. Your voice is fine and. Uh, Our video is also okay. So uh, uh, we have not started because uh, yeah, yeah, I know that. I was just setting up. Okay. Abani has also joined. Has uh, joined? Ah, uh, just now. Okay, I can I can read Abani. Mishra has joined yeah. the audio conference. Hi, hi all. Hello, hello, Abani. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Very good afternoon. Good afternoon. Asif, you are there. Yes, I am there. Who to whom am I speaking? Is it Abuni? Oh, you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, loud and clear. Okay. The question is, I am not using my headphone. I am not comfortable with that. And that's okay. But without headphone, I am not comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you are supposed to keep your video off, is it? Uh, yes, it is a testing. We will keep our video off. Okay. I don't know, but let us keep it off now. Let us. We are doing a, just a checking right now. Is good. All right. All right. हेलो 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 काली सर 
yes yes sir so uh, now our uh, guests are present so okay. we will see can we start gopal yes, sir, sir and uh, all if all principal sir uh, and uh, all others are present, in the platform our organizing yes. committee all members are present or not let us check and we will start okay sir i don't think principal sir uh, is there so principal sir kesi panda sir sir panda sir hello sir i am present sir i am present tell you okay so uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, i called uh, principal uh, principal sir uh, but uh, you are busy in uh, another call सुनो सुनो सर अभी क्या ज्वाइन करो सर विल ऑल दर प्रेजेंट विल स्टार्ट हाँ वाई विल मेक लेट ओके we will start our program okay sir panda sir and Hi, yes, sir yes and, uh, okay very good evening to uh, everyone i am dr pikki putuli associate professor civil engineering and one of the convener of the smp id 2020 uh, on behalf of the organizing committee of smp id 2020 uh, welcome you all present online to the valedictory ceremony um respected uh, principal sir um mr uh, avani prasad pisto vice president and head uh, tax and regular regu- regulatory gmr group in uh, energy sector so sai dasi pro commercial and contract manager united mechanical electromechanical lcc dubai uae professor uh, kc panda including team civil professor siar das tech coordinator of gck professor gc uh, vehra uh, co convener uh, one of the convener of this uh, smp id 2020 and uh, my other co conveners hod is of different departments uh, and my colleagues and uh, dear online participants am i audible yes sir. yes audible audible okay. yeah yeah okay so two days a uh, on various topics of sustainable materials and practices uh, in infrastructure development and then uh, we are uh, we all are here for the three function uh, before going to the uh, to our introduction of our guest uh, i would like to give a very brief uh, note on various uh, topics we discussed in these uh, two days uh in the day one after the inaugural ceremony Uh, the first session total seven number of uh, papers were present via uh, sustainable materials and uh, practices were discussed uh, such as uh, the use of bacterial concrete blended concrete self compacting concrete via and this on bond link uh, bond link sir um finding sir very finding sir very uh, useful a very useful and uh, i hope the uh, the researchers and uh, the practicing engineers uh, definitely uh, find something for that uh, total six of applicants and they they were basic um, transportation engineering related to pavement materials and uh, pavement design and uh, some of the papers uh, related to waste water treatment also discussed uh, the deliberations were very informative and uh, hopefully the researchers as well as practice engineers will find it useful for them 
next in the third, today in the third session total eight number of papers were presented mostly uh, from the field of structural engineering uh, the use of geosynthetic as a sustainable material for aspect protection in masculine was a very a very good informative topic and can be very useful for practicing engineers and uh, then uh, some of the um, waste materials and industrial byproducts which are being used for uh, production of uh, various uh, types of concretes are also uh, were also discussed in detail the findings were very informative and they definitely they can be used as sustainable material uh, in the last session a uh, total seven number of papers were uh, uh, presented in the field of geotechnical engineering um, and uh, mostly uh, these uh, papers are related to um, tabular lime stabilization of clay sub clay soils uh, soil reinforcement for black, black cotton soil using banana fibers bone columns etc were discussed in detail and found very useful for the researchers as well as uh, the field engineers uh, hopefully hopefully the participants in this the knowledge from these new research findings and uh, definitely it will help them uh, in their further research as well as the uh, practicing engineers will also find uh, some uh, knowledge so that they can utilize in their field uh, <coughs> So, uh, I would like to request all these participants to give their feedback and not to forget to submit their feedback so that uh, um, we can make further improvement in uh, organizing uh, future events. Uh, now we have with us online to experts from industry. Uh, let me introduce them. Uh, first, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Abani Prasad Misro, who graduated from Regional Engineering College, Rahul Kala. Now it is NIT uh, in the year of 1991. He did his uh, PGDM in Marketing and Finance from IMT Jaljewad and ad Advanced LDP from IM Bangalore. Presently, he is working as uh, the Vice President and Head of the Commercial contracts and regulatory PMR group in the sector. Prior prior to this, who uh, is the present uh, position, he worked in different uh, capacities as uh, manager, senior manager, AGM with uh, uh, a different organization like Tata Steel and Energy and GMR Energy Limited. Most years, he is a visiting faculty. At, uh, I am in Bangalore, uh, where he is taking, uh, uh, taking uh, classes on infrastructure contract management. Sir, I welcome you to the Valuable Ceremony of SMPID 2020. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, uh, and good evening, all. Good evening, sirs. Thank you. Uh, then I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Sanjay Dasri Noor. Who earned his uh, B.Tech uh, in Civil Engineering from Regional Engineering College in the same year of 1991 um, and obtained his Master's in Business Administration thereafter in Oil and Gas from University of Petroleum and Energy Services in India. Presently, he is working as a, a Commercial and Contract Manager at United Mechanical uh, Electromechanical LCC Dubai UAE since 2019 prior to, prior to, to Prior to his uh, present and uh, engaged, he had worked in different uh, capacities as uh, deputy general manager, senior manager, manager, and uh, senior quality surveyor, uh, planning engineer at various uh, construction organizations like uh, Gulfar Engineering, Muscat Oman, Petron Civil Engineering Private Limited, Mumbai India, Gaman India Limited. Will Wilmot Dixon Private Limited and so on for last uh, 20, uh, 28 years in India and abroad. He is a 
fellow of the chartered institute of arbitrators london uk uh, sir you are welcome to the valedictory ceremony of uh, smp id 2020 uh thank you very much sir for inviting me and making a me making me a part of this event okay thank you as uh, uh, here i would like to mention uh, both of the our uh, today's uh, experts from the industry are uh, very good friend of mine and uh, we are classmates at uh, digital engineering kalpala at the batch of 1991 and it's a really uh, it's a great pleasure for me as uh, both of them are present today and uh, uh, going to participate in deliberation and uh, definitely they uh, they will share their experience with the online participants and it will be definitely be a great day for me and as well as our uh, institute and then uh, <coughs> uh, first i would like to uh, request uh, mr Uh, as uh, noor to share his experience on infrastructure development and its sustainability with your online participants just a minute the, uh, the audio was bit breaking can you tell me again please the last no, no, no. you so said your audio is uh, uh, so uh, your experience you please share, experience. just share your experience on yeah. infrastructure development how Uh, and its uh, sustainability. Okay. Are you referring to me? Who are you referring? Okay, you, I request you, 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 you are requesting okay, to. Okay, fine. Yeah, okay, thank you very much for for making respected principal conveners, delegates, experts, guest of honor, and speakers. Thank you for making me a part of this highly educative conference, which imparted a lot of valuable knowledge. Also, it's good to have gathered to the members of the organizing committee, both on the front stage and on the back stage, who made this program a grand success. I'm taking home a lot of learnings from this conference, and some of them reminds me of my student life. Uh, some of them as a practicing engineer, and some of them as a practicing manager. However, there is one matter that I wish to share with you. Some of you may find it very useful. and what is this matter which i am trying to share with you without doubt this conference has created a platform towards protection of the environment and health and wellness of the society not only for the present mankind living on this earth but for the future generation to come that is why we are making sustainability things definitely we owe a duty towards them to uh, the future generation this conference has provided the raw material in a proper shape now let us come to the issue which i am i wanted to say after the raw material the raw material are the research papers which has been used towards the objective of the wellness of the society in summary we should make the use of this research paper correctly appropriately that is that, that is how we can say thank you to all the researchers who have shown who have been a uh, very well known work here in the last two days by saying appropriately i'm referring it to the time and the cost effective manner without any adjustment to the quality so the time the cost and the quality has to go hand in hand ladies and gentlemen if we analyze the functioning of the developed countries we find the importance of three this three function that the time cost quality because this is the main concept of the development of any nation if the time cost and quality moves everything goes you look at the financial management you look at the project management anything it goes with the three things others are subsidiary to this to achieve this we have to improve our implementation management so what i'm trying to say that you have given the raw material in this conference on how to implement it implementing implementation is governed by a number of parameters here i make to i am making reference to the two basic fundamental parameters the first is the will at the decision making level to implement it and second more importantly is to do it correctly here i wish to emphasize on when i say will to do it uh, i am referring to the will of the decision makers not only to make decisions but a will behind it and the word correct when i say it to do it correctly 
I'm saying it correctly, not repeating what we have said or not finding out flaws. In short, the will to do it correctly. Having said all those things, let me give you a small example what actually I'm trying to say here. In a construction contract, we normally draft a contract loading all the risk to the contractor, which may also include the design responsibility of the project. The fact is that the design has been done by somebody else in one part of the world and the contractor has been bestowed with this responsibility under the contract in which he has signed. He has no chance to negotiate it. He has no chance to, he has to do his business. He has to move with it. How on earth he can verify the design details without having a clue on this matter? I will not be surprised if some of us are, will not agree to me on why the contractor should not be provided with such responsibility because we all, because most of us think that the contractor should be given the responsi responsibility of verification of design, which oh, we, we need a separate platform to explain this matter in details. By loading all the risk on the contractor, we assume that it is the correct stand towards the risk management. But this is not the fact. You give, you load somebody with the risk which he cannot manage. We have to load the risk to the, the party who can best manage it. Then what happens? We, the, the contractor has to make and he comes into, he takes the responsibilities which he will not be able to do it. Okay, so what happens? So this results in defaults and the failure of the contractor because he has signed a contract. Disputes are created and referred to arbitration and legal proceedings which make the nation lose a lot of time, cost and, uh, cost and the quality because the final accounts are not settled. The work goes on and side by side the dispute goes on. Therefore, the contract, instead of increasing his sales skill and investing his money to improve upon their function to manage the construction more effectively within the budget, within the cost, within the time frame, within the quality, he starts developing on how to save himself legally from such type of clauses in the construction contract. I am clear about it because I have been a part to it, so it is not necessary, but this, the, contra the construction contract do and compels the contractors to take such steps the project that should have consumed X amount of money now consumed 2X rupees. This is just because we lacked our ability in a, and a will to do it correctly. At the same time, the hard work of the technocrats, prof professors, is not used appropriately. As what we have seen, such type of research paper, such type of dedication and the time which has been invested by all of you here is not used properly because what happens the right person has to study this document, not the contractors, because the contractors has a different motive. He has a different expertise. Therefore, I will share on this platform that the hard work of the technocrat, as shown in this conference, should be used appropriately. We need to address the flaws of our implementation management by the relevant researchers, because without implementation we are not able to do anything because all this raw material so nicely prepared so nicely done goes waste this is definitely not an easy task lot of people are involved with it lot of function are involved in it okay but it is definitely possible and if it is required i will be happy to contribute any such objective which is taken up by in by the institute thank you thank you Okay. Uh, was I audible? Thank you. Yes, you are very much audible. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for your nice uh, and uh, nice uh, sharing of your experience and uh, nicely pointed out, pointed out that uh, how the how whatever uh, your findings were uh, found from the conference is not actually getting implemented in the field. That is the gap. That is the gap between the actual uh, research uh, findings and implementation part always there is a gap exactly. so it uh, it takes a definitely it is uh, it is getting implemented but it takes a lot of time uh, to come to the coda provision and it will be implemented uh, it will it will implement but it is uh, it should do as soon as possible it should be taken up by the uh, policy makers so they should adopt it and uh, so, so that um, we can achieve our goal Thank you.
next uh, i would like to request our uh, thank you thank you three uh, coordinator professor siyadas to address uh, uh, <coughs> the participants in the closing ceremony uh, professor uh, professor siyadas please uh, uh, is uh, address our uh, participants Mudali sir, uh, excuse me. Actually, yes, Professor C R Das C R Das is busy in N P I U activities. Actually, today is the last day. Suddenly, there is a message from N P I U, so he is busy yes, on that sir. issue. So, we will will be carry him. Okay, okay, sir. So, uh, I, uh, so then I would like to request our uh, today's uh, <coughs> other industry expert, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, A.P. Mishra, uh, he has got a huge experience of 30 years in uh, uh, development of infrastructure across the country. Definitely, he will uh, enlighten us with his uh, experience. Yeah. Uh, please, uh, please, uh, please, our A.P. Mishra. Sure. Uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me again uh, and sharing. I will share some of my thoughts. Of course, I am not the expert, as you said. Of course, uh, I know a little bit more than more, more about the industry than the practice what you are doing, and uh, okay. being in a teaching community, uh, of course you are day in and day out practicing the knowledge and inventing new things and thinking a lot about it. But we put less thought and more action and uh, implement it more. And uh, we arrange finance, arrange uh, technology, but we don't develop technology, unlike you. So, having said that, um, I will just uh, go to the uh, sustainability issue, which is actually a global issue. It's not; it's a very large issue, then only limited to infrastructure sector, uh, material, etc. Uh, so, in that context, uh, let me set the ground uh, background here, uh, saying that uh, see, uh, when we start. in 1980s and 90s uh, environmental issue was only limited to you know drawing rooms as a fashion statement like people are talking in drawing rooms intellectually but nothing was done subsequently uh, in early 90s uh, i remember i was in tata steel and we were the first company in the country to get certified for iso 14000 i think uh, many of you would be knowing iso 14000 uh, certification is a key requirement for environment compliance compliance by any of the production companies so if you are not if you are not certified by iso 14000 then you are considered to be non compliant uh, in terms of environmental issues uh, or laws etc not only indian laws as global compliances also and you are not being funded also suppose uh, there are big uh, global banks or private equity funds who fund in the company they don't invest you on you unless you have iso 14000 certificate so started in tata steel 95 i was a certified auditor at that time for iso 14000 then uh, nalco was another company in the entire country i'm talking not only in uh, eastern region in entire country tata steel and um, nalco were the two only two companies were iso 14000 compliant in terms of production company and coming back to uh, contracting companies the contracting companies uh, even today none of them are iso 14000 compliant i see uh, maybe uh, lnt would be there um, just uh, which is coming to my name otherwise many there are hundreds of contracting companies in the country none of them are iso compliant iso 14000 compliant and if they are iso 14000 compliant automatically the processes uh, etc will be in place and they will be compelled to or uh, they will be forced to use uh, the materials what will be developed by various institutes or technology will be required so they will be doing that so that willingness is not there at all because it is not forced by the government it has to come uh, by force uh, on on its own will or uh, if the fund is uh, not coming automatically people will be forced to adopt these kind of uh, practices uh, or or else they will not get the certificate and the business will suffer so once the business suffers people start thinking about it or be, otherwise business will prosper if they adopt these practices so in this way uh, this uh, kind of and uh, uh, like this place like bhavani patna and all in our days when we were there in, i am not visiting as, as frequently as i used to earlier <laughs> so this kala and the one but now were in fact very distant places for us at those on those days 
and in this places now it is so developed uh, that people are talking about sustainability and the engineering colleges talking about uh, this sustainable materials it's really heartwarming and uh, heartening to listen and i think this would go a long way even uh, for other colleges to uh, you know uh, emulate and uh, adopt this kind of seminars and uh, um, propagate this kind of sustainable materials and one or two materials like your know, flyers etc are typically of interest to me because we are we being a power plant uh, generator and operator so we have uh, few coal based power plants or in odisha also yeah in dinkanal from 1000 megawatt so we produce lot of uh, flyers in our plant and uh, we have to dispose of uh, free of cost and of course uh, we are giving to brick manufacturers flyers brick manufacturers we are, we are also in fact planning to set up a cement plant where we can use the flyers as a, a by product from our plant so that plan is also going on so um, i saw some of the topic items the fly, flyers is used so that's um, that was interesting for me to see in fact we use um, uh, almost um, suppose 100% we are um, uh, producing only hardly 20 to 30 percent are getting used the rest 80 percent are either getting dumped into the flyers um, as dike or we are um, uh, using mining uh, you know used mines or emptied mines where you need to dump and make it whole so th these kind of materials are really useful for building or in construction industry where uh, we can adopt these kind of practices just to global scenario what is happening the global see if sustainability has to be uh, maintained then there has to be a political will there has to be a financial will there has to be of course technology will come like from engineering colleges or scientists many people are doing research so technology is a by product of your political will or financial will uh, so uh, right now like uh, there are there was a kyoto protocol which was signed in 1998 at the global level we started this uh, revolution on uh, environmental management uh, sustainability issue uh, so 192 countries signed but ironically us did not support it united states being the largest polluter in the world they thought that uh, it's not going to help us so they did not sign even uh, till today they are not they are not supporting any of the environmental causes and uh, another big country like china with a polluting almost 28% of the entire pollution in the globe he, they are uh, being told as a developing nation so, so called developing nation uh, and they are uh, projecting themselves as a developing nation though they are five times gdp than india and they are exempted from committing to any kind of global commitments on environmental issues so geopolitical factor plays a big role india is also in a similar category but india is more committed and though india is the third largest polluter of the last 10 years uh, so uh, and uh, most like us is not willing to sign and after especially trump came in 2015 this kyoto protocol protocol was replaced by another paris agreement the paris agreement is mm, uh, again uh, is not supported by trump so many people signed that agreement and um, uh, there is a uh, 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 commitment by all that the, they will bring down the global temperature to the level of uh, pre-industrial era temperature to 1.5 degree, not, not more than that. So that commitment has been taken in uh, 2015. But there, there, there is very little progress um, you could see, except that people are only using solar plants now. There, there is awareness has come, but implementation is really slow. So though it is in the right direction, but the speed is uh, not there to uh, get the willingness. So we, we also in GMR, what we're doing, we have all exited, uh, exiting all, all our coal-based power plants. Now we have stopped constructing our uh, coal plants, so which are polluting most. We are now um, developing hydro projects and renewables, uh, solar, etc. So that we reduce our carbon footprints. And um, if you see the countries like Australia, Australia, they are all closing their closing their all coal based plants they, by government order they are closing france is using only nuclear power they don't have any coal based plant europe uh, europe in fact very few coal based plants they are using either wind or uh, your gas based plants earlier now they, they are, that is also stopped uh, germany is completely solar norway is fully hydro hydro power plant then they don't have anything so European countries, because they are the most affected because of this global warming, because their glaciers are melting, the uh, temperature is rising. Even in fact, Paris was having 41 degree temperature this summer. The last two three years, it is happening regularly. 
as good as ours so they are very much concerned uh, that, uh, more than us particularly and but but ironically us is the world leader unless us does something nobody else because the impact would be less you unless us china do more then impact would be less so but however it is happening now uh, to see that this kind of activities we are doing in india uh, in um, at least aligning ourselves to the global commitments of the country as a whole and uh, to the industry as a whole and we'll reduce uh, i'm sure we, it is going to go a long way to reduce the carbon footprints and ensure sustainability in future thank you all uh thank you very much uh, mr uh, abani prasad mishra uh, for your nice presentation of your experience uh, definitely our uh, participants uh, uh, will appreciate it and uh, what i can conclude over here that uh, there should be a, a good uh, association between the academic academia as well as with uh, the industry so that uh, we can able to implement uh, sustainability or uh, uh, sustainability uh, aspect of the uh, infrastructure development so now i would like to request uh, our principal sir uh, to share his views on this uh, two days uh, um, national conference on sustainable material and uh, practices sir <coughs> please sir please uh, good evening everybody good evening. am i audible or hello yeah, yeah. Good, evening. Sir, yes, sir. good evening yes yeah. sir yes sir we can hear you good evening good evening everybody and uh, and uh, hello hello sir sir uh, audible can you hear audible na yeah, yes yeah. sir yes sir okay okay uh, good evening everybody uh, actually i am uh, really overwhelmed to see the participants the uh, delegates and uh, everybody from uh, different uh, part of the country as well as from the uh, beyond the country also i am also really happy to see the at the valedictory from function uh, mr abani Mishra and Asif Noor, who shared uh, their uh, real practical uh, views on the different issues of uh, civil engineering. Basically, I am not a civil engineer actually, but it is a great thing that uh, I am really happy to know that uh, both of the experts are uh, friends of uh, Professor P K Moduli, and even. i am also lucky to have a uh, studied at uh, and studied at nit raurkela okay yeah uh, during uh, those time when you have completed your btech we are, i was at uh, mtech in the same hall hall of residence number 4 okay <laughs> good to hear many <laughs> many times actually mud professor muduli and i talk about our back post that uh, garden area and every every everything i used to see you all, uh, all the nitians i was staying in hostel too hostel too no actually uh, and um, the first day it was uh, the inauguration and the some um, papers on uh, different issues of civil engineering as really nice second day it was also a uh, yeah, it was very very, very nice efforts from different people they have narrated their uh, experience research papers were also uh, done they, they have shown their research work share their views share their uh, knowledge and it is a really nice platform Uh, to have and i hope the department of civil engineering under the head uh, chief of dr dc panda uh, will will continue this type of act activities as as, uh, as uh, mr abani mr abani mr told that sustainability activities we have already started and we will continue it and in the remote area like kandi uh, also we will do and i hope the department will definitely contribute a lot 
and uh, uh, I, I I feel and I know the, the some of these two days uh, we have a great knowledge sharing and uh, uh, hope uh, the researchers, participants, and delegates will continue their research work on the different issues and wish them all the best. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank for your valuable uh, tips and uh, for further uh, improvement uh, in the future. Uh, now I would like to request our uh, head of the department, Professor K.C. Papanda sir, uh, to, pick, uh, to uh, speak to lines. Uh, Thank you, Professor Muduji. Good evening to all of you. Respected Chintan sir, Respected Mr. Ravani Prasad Mishra, Vice President and Head Commercial Contract and Regulatory. Respected Mr. Sawyer Dasib Noon, Commercial and Contract Manager, United Mechanical Electromechanical Limited. Respected uh, convener of the program, Professor Gopal Charan Bera and Professor P.K. Muduli. And uh, co convener of the program, Professor Kali Prasan Shetty, Jagadi Kishan Nayak, Sojanya Kumar Sao, and Subhash Sri Pundra. Respected HODs, my dear colleagues, respected authors and participants, I am very happy to say that more than 30 papers presented by author in the four days online national conference. Also, four keynote presentations delivered by the student speakers. Also, around 100 participants participated in the online conference. Also, some participants went through a full live YouTube streaming. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to all of you. I expect all the authors and participants have gained some knowledge on the topic sustainable materials and practices for infrastructure development. I would also like to thank to all esteemed speakers for their valuable uh, informative talk on the auto four session. Also, I thanks to all uh, session chair for uh, for their nicely handled the session. I would also thanks to our principal sir for his inspiration and motivation and guiding in various stage of our conference and made the event very, very successful. Also, I thanks to our tech team coordinator for the inspiration and the financial help. I would like to thank to the convener, Professor Gopal Charan Bega and Professor P.K. Muduli, co-convener, Professor K.P. Sethi, Professor J.K. Naik, S.K. Sao and Subhash Ponta for their hard work and effort since two months and made the event a very successful. Also thankful to all HOD, organizing committee, advisory committee, technical committee, financial publishing committee and all coordinators for their valuable help and guidance throughout the national conference. Also I thank to our uh, the present valedictory to industrial export for their very valuable uh, talk on the sustainable practices from the point of industry and the event the uh, event the valid event very successful at the end i would like to say more say uh, we will keep on organizing similar program in coming day also thank you have a nice day thank you very much sir uh, uh, thank you, sir, for uh, your in, uh, inspiring words. Now I would like to request uh, uh, our other convener, Dr. Uh, D.C. Behra, uh, to share his views. Okay. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, good evening to all of you, respected principal, sir. Uh, Validatory uh, session uh, chairs and validatory uh, industrialist persons for this uh, validatory session, Asif Nur sir, Avan Mishra sir, and uh, all the HODs, 
participants, committee members, and all these members. Uh, I will not thank you anyone because uh, if I will go for uh, sharing my only I am sharing my values. Uh, views. Here is a sojourner sir who will go for the vote of thanks. If I will do something, it is injustice for you. So uh, let me conclude in one sentence. Uh, God is there. We have uh, worked for this, and uh, finally we have got the result. Uh, initially, we have got uh, the uh, speakers. Speakers better way. Uh, everyone has uh, praised it, and uh, our efforts has told more than uh, thirty papers nicely presented. And uh, I I owe a lot to the Almighty God. Thank you all the. To help us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I would request to uh, Sir uh, S K Sahu, uh, Assistant Professor, Civil Engineering Department, and uh, my co-convener uh, to give word of thanks. With a uh, low voice. Voice is very low. Increase the sound. Yes, yes. No. Uh, Distinguished dignitaries, respect of the advisor. Nae. Ah, welcome. And all our dear participants. So, so then, uh, your voice, voice, voice is uh, very feeble. Your voice is very feeble. Please increase the. Uh, uh, increase, volume. increase it. Uh, sir, otherwise, uh, take the microphone uh, near to your mouth. This is not audible clearly. There is some problem with the microphone. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for the impactful leader and motivating faculties. Uh, right from concept, it's still a uh, mixed company. It is without your help uh, that. Is properly, and after that, I want to convey my high regards to eminent personalities present here. Uh, actually, Professor S K Das, head of Civil Engineering Department, IIT Dhanbad. Actually, he was unable to present here, but we seek his blessings. And he was my former professor while I was studying B.Tech in NIT Raulkala. So we seek his blessings for the successful completion. Then I heartily uh, thankful to Mr. Syed Asir Noor for his uh, untiring support and uh, stressing on the practical aspect of the conference. That is, a conference is not truly successful uh, unless it is implemented properly in the field. And again, I would like. to thank mr abani prasad misra sir for uh, adding 
value to our very basic theme of the conference that is on sustainability by enlightening on views uh, of the sustainability that is being practiced in industries and some global society. Then I would like to uh, be thankful to Dr. Dr. Chandra Patel, of the civil engineering department of this program. Thank you, sir, for leading us to conduct such a successful conference. And we would like our department to conduct more such programs and knowledge sharing practices under your guidance. I would thank Dr. Chitaranjan Das, tq 3 coordinator of our institute for never making us feel a financial crunch to organize a wonderful conference. Even in this, I would convey my regards all the members of advisory committee and organizing committee for their uh, for sharing their expertise to conduct this conference in a much better way. Again, my high regards to Dr. Upal Charan Behera and to Dr. Pradyut Kumar Moduli, conveners of this conference, who guided the team in each and every step of the conference. I would also like to thank Mr. Jajati Kesri Naik, Mr. Suvasa and Dr. Kali Prasanna Sethi, co-conveners of this conference, whose continuous efforts as a team uh, helped us make this conference a grand success. And I have a special thanks to Mr. Dilip Kumar Bagal, assistant professor from Mechanical Engineering Department, whose digital support was crucial for this pandemic. I would like to extend my thanks to our student coordinators, especially Jadis Paresh and Purusuttam, for organizing, for designing the SMPID website in a wonderful way. Again, I would also like to thank our civil engineering student coordinators, Mr. Sanas Kumar, Mr. Saurabh, and Mr. Akas, for uh, all the and helping us in all possible way. Lastly, I would like to thank all the participants for your patient hearing because knowledge sharing is something that never stops even in this COVID crisis. So thanks to all for being part of this academic behavior. With this, I conclude my vote of thanks. And uh, sir, uh, actually, sir, it's so Okay, uh, thank uh, uh, well, sir, now we can, can uh, uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Now we can declare our uh, SMPI 2020 is uh, uh, over. Okay, uh, so conference is over. over here. Okay, we can call it a day. <laughs> yes, sir. We can call it a day. Okay. Thank you, so, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your support and for your support. Thank you. Thank you to all of you for your support. Thank you all. Thank you, Patis. Thank you, Abhani sir, Asif sir. Definitely our assistant uh, will be uh, yeah. there in future also. Sure, but, thank you. Uh, this type yeah. of activity. Thank you very much. Sir. Hope to hope someday we'll meet again. In person, not 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 virtually in person. Definitely, definitely. All right. Whenever you are there in Odisha, we will definitely sure. Call for Whenever you are also coming to Bhubaneswar or Arkala, also you can call us so that we can make no problem. I come to Bhubaneswar. Please come to our place. Bhubaneswar, I come at least at least once in a year on my personal trip. See, my parents are there in Raukela, so I normally visit Raukela. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, we can so whenever you will come, then uh, give a ring so that we can yeah, yes, uh, see you personally also. <laughs> now, you have said, now you have set up a platform that I will definitely come over there to the college. First, it was the... It was most most to, welcome, most welcome. Now most it welcome. is all of you. So it's, it's it will be my pleasure. Yeah.
Definitely. Okay. Definitely. All right. Thank you very much. I'll see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, participants uh, and the attendees. Those uh, ones rather than authors and presenters, uh, attendees are uh, the feedback form. And based on your feedback form, you will get your e certificate soon. Okay. Now we can. Uh... Okay, I'm leaving the meeting. Okay. ओके our department you, sir you. principal sir ha ah, ha we thanks, want to pull you towards our department definitely definitely <laughs> it will be nice <laughs> so with your permission i will show you one uh, motivational video for skill engineer so you will be more, no, will no be more motivated towards our department De definitely please please okay. carry on carry on. no no problem और नेटर मन हैंग हो जी जो है कि जाओ नहीं की और कोई दे और सर नेटवर्क के सर्च हो दे नहीं नहीं इट्स ऑल लाइक ऑल लाइक नो प्रॉब्लम ओके सर थैंक यू सर रन ओनली हेलो